four. Or pardon me, uh, Anderson is going to kick off. The Falcons are waiting for the for the uh, kick right now. 71,000 plus, the third straight sellout in New Orleans, and the crowd is a factor here. Anderson's kick. The Swede kicks it to the five-yard line. Riggs, Gerald Riggs, the number one draft choice of a year ago. Riggs out, gets a good return. Look out. Wow, Gerald Riggs takes it to the 36 in a hurry. The Falcons looked hot. Anderson, the kicker, made the tackle. The offensive lineup, Bartkowski, 17 TDs, only three interceptions. Andrews, we'll talk about him later. Bo Robinson, the H-back. Alfred Jenkins, who always plays well against New Orleans. And Stacey Bailey, a sensation so far this year. Ken Thielman, Van Note, Scully Bryant, big, solid, and tough. Arthur Cox is your tight end. You're looking at the big fellow who is healthy and bullish this year. He's really got his life under control. His name is Bartkowski. Motion man is Robinson coming into the slot. Bartkowski rolling, throwing back. It's a screen away to William Andrews over the 40. Andrews into New Orleans territory to the 49. Kovac made him go out of bounds there. Well, what a play. Can you imagine an Atlanta team coming out with a screen away to start? Wide open, wide open all year long. The Saints defensive line, Bruce Clark, he was worth the number one choice given to Green Bay. Derlin Moore, very solid at nose. And Jimmy Wilkes, a fine outside rusher. Jackson Kovacs, Dennis Winston, Dirt, he is the glue man there on this linebacking core. And Waymer Poe, good at the corners. Russell Gary and Waddle at the safety. That's a good defensive club. First and 10, handoff to Andrews, cuts back. Andrews hit hard, but gets to the 46-yard line. Derwin Moore and Clark combining there for the tackle. Charlie Waters, what a difference in this man from the fellow that I used to talk to in the late 70s when he would be hurt. And Boy, he's got so much poise. Now we visited with him yesterday, and his just, face just lit up. You know, he said, yeah, I shouldn't be feeling this good. Our team is 4-5, and five, but I really enjoy playing football with this type of attack that we have here in Atlanta. And, of course, Atlanta claims they lost games late that they should have won. A lot of people agree, and some people don't care. Of course, the Saints have their fans, right? Straight ahead, Andrews. Maybe a yard. Whitney Paul, the former Colorado Buffalo, made a good tackle there along with Waddle. This first series is very important in this stadium because this is a wild place. This is the loudest stadium in the NFL. And Atlanta said to us yesterday, look, we've got to do something on the first drive to try to calm the people down so that we won't be intimidated. They got 17 rookies on their team, and this noise here can be a factor. And look at this defensive team that they're going against. One of the best in the NFC, or NFL for that matter. And they're going to get a chance to stop Bartkowski on third down and five at the 45. Johnson's in motion. Bartkowski going and missing as he tried for Cox coming across the middle in the under pattern. Number 51, Whitney Paul, who has good speed and height, really was in good defensive position. Well, that was a good pass by Bartkowski, good enough to, for a completion. But that's the type of thing you don't want to happen to, happen to you if you're an Atlanta team that gets this crowd fired up. The rookie from Penn State, the greatest kicker that Joe Paterno ever had. Jock Amara will be kicking Jeff Groth, whom Stabler says is a fast Fred Bolitnikoff, his old Raider teammate. Here's Jock Amara trying for the outside, inside the 10, of course, if he can. Let's see what he gets. No, it's going to, wait, 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 wait. Hello, great kicking game, good coverage by Atlanta. And the Saints are going to have 98 yards staring at them before they can reach pay dirt. Kane pounced on it. No score. A great punt. And everybody's sitting on a keg of dynamite here at the Superdome. The Honda Accord LX four-door sedan. It comes with a long list of standard equipment. Cruise control, air conditioning, a sophisticated stereo, a lighted mirror, power door locks and windows. The Accord LX has everything. Almost. The yacht is optional. Really untested but talented, Dave Wilson. Look at that. The last start was November 15th of 81. And he set out the whole 1982 season with a knee injury. But King Hill, his quarterback coach, says this young man can be a great, not just a good quarterback. We'll set the lineup in just a moment. The toss back to George Rogers. Rogers hit hard in three. 
Maybe gets to the four-yard line. Kenny Johnson came up quickly. Dave Wilson is your quarterback out of Illinois where he only played about one full season. George Rogers is healthy again. Look out. Hokie Gaijan, a local fellow at fullback. Eugene Goodlow, he is not a rookie. He is a very fine receiver. And Jeff Groth is the little guy that runs you under patterns. Lafari, Edelman, Hill, Ubre, Brock, tall, big, and very strong. Hobie Brenner's your tight end. Second down, and call it nine. Give Rogers one yard. He calls his own plays, and this one is a pass from the end zone. Wilson on target. Hobie Brenner gets out over the 35-yard line, and the crowd goes wild. Well, that's a pretty gutsy call. Backed up in your own end zone. You hadn't even started it since 1981. You throw the ball down the middle. And on this coverage right here, Atlanta plays a double zone where they have both the safeties split to the outside. And they run the tight end down the middle. Pridemore comes in and closes. But <laughs> Brenner's a tough kid to bring down, isn't he? And the Falcons don't do a lot of blitzing on defense. So it was really a pretty good call by the quarterback. And he does call his own plays. Perhaps the last quarterbacking situation in the NFL is right here in New Orleans where the quarterback calls his own. First and 10, the toss, back to Rodgers. George Rodgers cuts inside, gets to the 42. What a runner. We saw him on opening day have 206 yards rushing against the St. Louis Cardinals. Then he got hurt, but he's back now. It looks like he's full speed. Yeah, he's only had two games of this year over 100 yards, but he's got a lot of potential, 200 yards the first game of the year. And it's interesting that the Atlanta team said, hey, Rodgers doesn't bother us that, that much. It's that uh, Wilson, Wayne Wilson, that bothers the Atlanta Falcons. Well, I don't know. I think this guy here, George Rodgers, is a great player. He's more in potential. <laughs> he came in this league as a rookie and, and led the whole thing. He laid down numbers they're still trying to catch. Second down and three. A big pass by Young Wilson on the second play. And Rodgers, again, good defensive play. Good gang tackling by the men in red. Yates makes the stop there, and let's set it. Jeff Yates, they call him Dog. He's a good defensive end against the rush. Provence, the young rookie. Don Smith, the all-pro at right tackle. And Jeff Bone Merrill at right end. Rady, the rookie. Kai Kendall, who's back in the middle. And Buddy Curry, who had 20 tackles against this team in the first meeting. Butler and Johnson at the corners playing well. Pridemore and Britt at the safety. Britt, of course, is the young rookie they've been wanting in there all season. And he had a really good game last week. I think he's a factor in the ball game today. Third down and short. Short yardage offense. Rogers the only back behind the quarterback. And it's a fake. It's a play action. Wilson going outside. Wide open receiver. Number 46. Gajon takes it inside the 30. Good looking offensive play called by number 18. Really good wide open play. Fake the running play on short yardage. A lot of poise in the pocket. Plenty of time to throw. Cajun's out in the flat. Boy, this is any indication of how this game's going to go today. We're looking at wide open football. How did the receiver get that wide open on short yardage? Wouldn't there be well, some cornerback right up on his nose? Should be. Maybe the man is up there being a little too aggressive. It's probably what happened. Gajon coming out of the backfield, but he was wide open out there against short yardage. What a good call. And what a wide open call correct myself, it's outside the 30 at the 31 yard line, but it is a first and 10. Wilson doesn't like what he sees. Let's burn one and make sure we get something on first drive. Not a bad thought. And it looks like young Wilson out of the Big Ten is going to be some quarterback. No score in the first period. Honda would like to make a point about the new car. It goes an EPA estimated 51 miles per gallon, 67 highway. It's the number one gas mileage car in America, period. The new Honda Civic CRX, the longest distance between two points. Gaijan, the substitute fullback, his 10th catch of the year has set up the situation. Look at this score. The Eagles surprisingly on top of Dallas 7-0, only a surprise in that they always do that, and Dallas somehow comes back and wins. Pittsburgh 7-0 over San Diego. That is a surprise that Philadelphia doesn't do very well at home this year. That's the truth. On the road, the Falcons right now have got their defense in there, and they got to stop this same offense. Motion man to the outside. 
Wilson being rushed and sacked as Don Smith comes through. Number 65 simply beat Edelman and gets the sack, and they don't register too many sacks. Don Smith is the leader on their defensive team, 65 on the right-hand side of your screen, working against Brad Edelman, the young guard. He just beats him. Well, that's a pressure move. The guy really loves playing the inner tackle. He's played in the three, when Atlanta played the three-man front, he was a nose guard. Boy, he really loves playing the tackle now if they go to a four-man front. A rough, tough guy. Here's the numbers on the defense, and though it's right in the middle of the pack, don't be deceived. Sometimes these teams play a little bit. They bend, as they say, and don't break. Boy, and they get a lot of turnovers down in this, in this territory close to the goal line. Second down, and 20 to go. Wilson under a good pass. Good pass to break. Good throw, short of the first down by five yards. But this was a spaceship, a very fine pass. Well, that's a beautiful pass by the young quarterback. Watch how he sets up to the pocket with this poise now. Good protection. Growth is between the short man and the deep man on the deep on the deep sideline route. Tough pass to complete, the long way to throw it, a 15-yarder. This is the man they like to go to, and he runs away from Curry. Pretty cute move. It does look like Bolitnikov, doesn't he? Wilson, perfect in the air so far. It brings up third down and call it four. The fake to Rogers, being rushed. This is where Wilson can play on the run, throwing for the end zone and out of the end zone, hitting the upright. You're right, Tom. That rolling out, that's the thing that you wouldn't see if you had Kenny Stabler in there. He's a little, well, 17 years in the league gets you a little brittle and not very mobile, and this guy's very mobile, and he should feel very good about taking the team down this far on the first series when they got it at the two at the beginning of the drive. Kenny Luck, uh, Kenny Johnson went through the door at the end of the Superdome and tried to get outside to get the ball. You're looking at Anderson, the young Swede out of Michigan State. He's only missed three times this year. A 41-yard attempt. It's blocked. It's blocked. Anderson takes it, or the holder took it on in as Pitts came through, I believe, and blocked it. Boy, that is characteristic of this Atlanta team. They are so big and so strong down here in the 30-yard line in. You'll see 74 right over the center, driving up, penetrating and getting his arm up and blocking this kick. You know, that ball was kicked a little low too, Tom. Yeah, I believe it was low. And Merkins, Guido Merkins, tried to fall on it and recover it and got his shirt torn off in the process. 9.05 left in the first, still no score. And the powder's burning. That kid's out there again. But he's not alone. He's got a dream with him. And every night after work, he chases that dream. The one that says, someday, you're going to watch him run 400 meters faster than any other man in the summer games. And in the past, it probably would have been just a dream. But we have an Olympic training center now in Colorado Springs. And he can go there and learn how to run faster than he's ever run before. So maybe he'll become as good as he believes he can be. And maybe one summer day, when you're watching the 84 games, you just might say, that kid's out there again. This American Dream is brought to you by Miller High Life, the sponsor of the U.S. Olympic Training Center. Tom Brookshire with Charlie Waters at the Superdome. Pitts, by the way, that block was the fifth block of a kick by the Atlanta Falcons in the last four games. That's not too bad an average. That might get you into the playoffs. But the team is four and five, and their opponent is five and four. Bartkowski starting his falls down. He has not been touched down. Ooh, now he's touched down. <laughs> Doc Kovacs, the linebacker, made sure. Why do they call him the Doc? Well, he's a pre-med student, Phi Beta Kappa in college, and he calls the defenses for this New Orleans team. What's he, he was studying. I mean, what kind of a doctor is he going to be? A shrink? Orthopedic I surgeon? Don't, I don't know. Probably an <laughs> orthopedic surgeon is what he needs to be. You know, Brokowski dropped, tripped, tripped, dropping back from the quarterback from the center right there. You know, they practice and they play on real turf all the time. And here they are in this artificial turf, and it's a factor when you're not used to playing on it. And this guy, just to maybe just pick your feet up a little bit more, plus he's got bad knees. 
He's also uh, cut down that sack rate the last three or four games, too. A lot of those came early in the year when they were getting straight. Bartkowski going to burn a timeout to get to the sidelines. Offense right now stalled out a little bit as young Dan Henning talks to his QB, who's the best in the business. Second down and 19 on the 19th. Bartkowski, the quarterback, from the bench back into the huddle. Andrews, the remaining back. Billy White shoots Johnson reverse motion. Back to throw. Being rushed, gets away from Clark and throws a strike. Out to the 38 by Stacy Bailey. Or down to the 42 for Bailey, pardon me. Frank Wadlett making the tackle there. Bailey has just been sensational. Three 100-yard reception days in a row after he started against the Eagles. He's the first one with the Falcons that have done that, and he had over 100 yards against the Saints the last times they played. They had a little divide move there, a little movement by the H-back. Johnson went to the outside, and that pulled Watlett over there, and that opened it up in the middle for Bailey down the middle. A 39-yard reception, and Bartkowski quiets the crowd with a tremendous pass. First down, inside trap play by the H-back, and Andrews breaks two tackles and gets inside the 40 to the 38. Kovac and Watlett hanging on. What a back. Boy, he breaks a lot of tackles. Let's look at what the H-back is here in the Atlanta system. It's really the hitting back, the number 33, Bo Robinson. is supposed to be hooking the outside linebacker right here, and he really doesn't do anything, but he is a factor in this <laughs> ballgame, and we'll be seeing this. Seeing what Robinson does, he can trap the inside, he traps the outside, and he also hooks linebackers. I tell you what, that he better start hitting somebody or Henning will be after him. Second down and seven. Call it the 39. Bartkowski, he's got time this time. Foot strike. Reception at the 31 by Stacy Bailey. Let's go to New York City right now to the NFL Today group and get an update from Brent Musburger. Tom, here it is. Your Philadelphia Eagles have struck first on the Dallas Cowboys. Ron Jaworski pulls out. He goes to Mike Quick for Quick, his eighth touchdown of the season. Eagles seven, Cowboys nothing. Back to Brooklyn. You're right, Brent. The last game started the same way. Jaworski hit Quick, quick. with a big touchdown, and the, and the team took the rest of the day off. And the Cowboys, that's where they like to be, seven, seven, nothing down. And that's the way they do it. They come from behind so often. Well, they're raising the shadow of the Alamo. I guess you get used to that. <laughs> You Cowboys are tough. First and 10 now on the 31-yard line. Junior Miller in the game for the first time in motion. Barkowski going up. He's got an open receiver and overthrows. Number 84 in the end zone. Alfred Jenkins simply overthrown. Boy, Steve wants that one back. He'd like to lock and load that one again. Just, he, he knows if he had just lost it that a little softer, he had a touchdown. He's leading the, uh, in the league in quarterback rating. That's just a rating of how well the passer is doing. Not so much it doesn't come into play. Sacks don't come into play. The team record doesn't come into play. But, boy, as far as passing, he's only thrown three interceptions amazing. all year. That's amazing. That's an amazing t statistic. And the team is only four and five, which is a reason they're a little bit frustrated. Second down and 10 from the 31. Motion man is Johnson. Markowski going to the right side and overthrows a well-covered Stacy Bailey. He was doubled and covered. That might have been a waste pitch. Well, they had a play set up. They wanted to throw it. They wanted to fake the quick screen, hoping they'd pull Watlett up. Watlett's a pretty aggressive safety man. And you'll see Barkowski look left, hoping he can pull Watlett up there and then they throw back to the post. Watlett makes it. He's not, he doesn't bite on that. You see 49, Frank Watlett coming into the play. And, Wisely overthrown by Barkowski. It's the reason the Saints are number one against the pass in the NFC. They play that secondary like it's now or never, and it always is. Three out of six for 59 yards for Barkowski, but no cigar so far. Third down and 10. 
Markowski with good time outside off the hands of William Andrews and covered very well by number 57. Ricky Jackson was right there with him. This is good coverage all over. This is not the primary receiver. Ball is just slightly tipped by Jackson. Andrews is not the primary receiver. That was good coverage by the Saint defense. Lockhurst, we got two southpaw sidewinders kicking here today. And if you folks think that your television sets backwards or something, <laughs> relax, will you? We were trying to figure out how, how fouled up you must be to be a kicker and left-handed, right? The young man's from South Point, England, and a good kicker. He's only missed three. This is pretty good range for him, a 49-yard attempt. And he's good at this distance, though. It's on the way. It's just short. The officials were right there. It is just short. It was on target, but not beamed in. The officials today, by the way, the referee is Freddie Wyant. Tony Valeri's the linesman. After you win a tough race, you want to take it easy, but you don't want to slow down. Taste of Miller High Life. Well, edifice to sports, and it is a gorgeous place. They started out to build it for about 55 million. They think it went to 160, but for whatever the reason, when they hold Super Bowls here, and you played in one here, Super Bowl 12. Oh, and it was loud in this place. It is loud. Is it a good place to play? Though? Yes, it is. Real good place. We got a good game. No score in the first. Atlanta, New Orleans. A loss back to the 31. George Rogers was hit as soon as he took the handoff by Don Smith. How good is the defensive line for Atlanta? Are they a bunch of what they call super achievers? Are they really that good talent-wise? Well, they, they play the run well, but they're not that strong as far as pass rush. Don Smith is the best player in the line, and they're a little weak. They're missing Mike Zeely, who's hurt, and they've been taking the place by Andrew Province, but uh, they're, they're okay. Don Smith's the best player in that line. And they play the run pretty well. Yates and Murrow on the outside. Province in the middle, and of course, Don Smith. Here's Wilson back on second down and 10. The flags are down. The ball looks like it was trapped maybe about the 34-yard line by George Rogers. Freddie Wyant's crew, the, the zebras out there, will meet, decide, probably draw straws, but they will get a decision anyway for us. Wyatt signals offsides. The New Orleans Saints, the crowd a little bit quiet, but in this building, it really comes up. Their big slogan in this city right now, other than the World's Fair next year, is it can happen here. They're talking about football. They would love to Sunday be in a Super Bowl. Oh. Back in their own city. Comes back here in 1986. I'm told. They might be the first team to be in a Super Bowl in their home city. This team is coming up. A couple of scores from around the league. There's Snake Stabler in very uncomfortable position for him. Boy, I tell you, he might be a Willie Nelson lookalike. This guy really loves to play football. The scores: Minnesota on top of Tampa Bay early, seven nothing. Looks like McKay's team can't get anything going this season. 0 oh, and 9 so far. Second down, 15. Reverse handoff as Goodlow gets it. Good defense over there. As Kenny Johnson came up very quickly. And John Rady, the young linebacker. Boy, that time, slow developing play, even with Goodlow's speed. Yeah, that's, uh, you need to establish something before you start running the misdirection plays. You need to establish a running game. And the Saints really have an established running game. They're just throwing the ball extremely well. Rodgers is out. It'll bring up a third down and 12. Duckett is in. Growth is in. Some speed. Growth is in the slot to the bottom of the screen. Along with Duckett. Wilson, straight drop back. He has time and dumps it in the flat. And Gaijan gets a headache. Kenny Johnson really nailed the back coming out of the backfield. 
Pulling him out of bounds. So look, don't be catching in front of me. You can always do that when you're swinging them into your own bench, too. That <laughs> yeah. helps, doesn't it? <laughs> the greatest punt returner in the history of this league, a 12-yard average for all the years that Billy White shoots Johnson has played, and he's averaging 12.6 again this year. Incredible person. Not the biggest, but maybe one of the best we've seen in a long time. A free agent out of Widener College. He's 31 now and, and still getting hot. Fourth down punt. Erksleben's kick back to the 22 goes White Shoes. Johnson dancing and gets out to the 34-yard line. Big players stacked all around him as Petersack makes the tackle. Don't forget NCAA football next week. On Saturday, it's UCLA and Arizona at 12 o'clock Eastern time. The NCAA today begins it, and then UCLA and Arizona, a Pac-10 battle, and they're both thinking Rose Bowl still, aren't they? Yeah, the Rose Bowl's on the line with that ball game. Arizona's 5-3-1 and one overall, UCLA 5-3-1. and one. Uh, That's about a close, uh, good college game as you'll see, and it's right here on CBS next Saturday. No score, 403 left in the first quarter at the Superdome. First and 10 for Atlanta. Neither offense has really found their tempo yet. William Andrews inside to the 37 yard line, maybe the 38. Derlin Moore trips him up. The defensive team here at New Orleans is led by Dirt Winston. Let's watch what he does on this play. He's number 68, Thielman, RC Thielman, all pro, come out and blast on him. And that's the reason why they got seven, well, four yards on that play. What action. Thielman's about 275, and I'll tell you, Dirt Winston didn't give any ground at all, did no, he? No, that's, that's collusion. That's what the game's all, that's what it's all about right down here in pit. Give Andrews a little over four yards, second down and six. Misdirection inside handoff. Andrews out to the 41, but he gets hit hard there. Kovacs first. Tell me about number 31. Since he came in the league in 79, do his stats with he and Walter Payton as a comparison. Boy, it's amazing. He is the all-time all, uh, combined yardage leader ahead of Payton, which you hear so much about Payton. The reason why you don't hear much about William Andrews is because his longest run his whole career, he's, still, he's averaging 4.5 yards a carry, but his longest run is only 33 yards. So he has a lot of those 10-yard bursts oh, yeah. where he's splattering people, huh? Don't make highlights. Oh, quick drop. Quick drop and knocked away by Whitney Paul, almost intercepted. And Whitney Paul is built like a an NBA forward. He could run that into the end zone. And he's a leaper. He was a high jumper in, in college, jumped 6'10". Six, six, this ball's telegraphed out there, and he tries to throw it over Whitney's ball, Whitney Paul's head. He threw it too hard. The two-step drop and a blind pass. You've got to have a lot of faith to throw that. And Whitney Paul almost came away with the ring. Jock Amaro, back to kick again. His first kick was down on the two-yard line. He's faking it. Jock Amaro's going to run. He's got the first down and gets to the 46-yard line. Jock Amaro with the fake punt and run. Now, 10,000 Atlanta Falcon fans came to the Superdome, so that's the cheering you're hearing. This, I don't, this is not a planned play. Well, I don't know, maybe Pride Moore looks like yeah. he knows what's going on. You see a little something, you don't tell too many people they don't want to sell it. But a team, it's he, they got to have a victory to stay in the race, so they're going to try things like this today. All right, now, wait a minute. You said a very good thing, though. You don't want to tell everybody on the team, right? Keep it a secret. That's right, just tell just enough. A first down play, a great run by Jacamar. What a call. A big rush on Barkowski, but he... Gets the ball off anyway, intended for Bailey. Pretty big rush by Bruce Clark. Went to Canada after being drafted number one by Green Bay. Played it very well up in Canada. And Bum Phillips has that Canadian connection. If you're a good player and you go north of the line, Bum will get you. He'll bring you back. He's got four teams on their team from the CFL. Four players? Four, well, four players on their team. And Bruce Clark had to give up a number one draft choice to get him. Boy, what a special. Boy, he is. He's a, oh, what a body. You play, locker room. You, oh, what a, you play that 34, you got to have real Titans at the defensive ends. Andrews takes it back inside. Make that Riggs takes it back inside. He's coming off the bench and spelling Andrews at times and seems to be enjoying uh, his role. 
however you think a great player like this, the number one must finally say, I've got to go someplace where I can start and play, huh? Well, he's, he should should be getting this content after a couple more years, but after one or two years and playing in front of a, behind a guy like Andrews, you can't, golly, you can't forget the type of player that he is. He's taking it very well. He said he knows that he's running behind one of the great players. Rollout pass by Markowski. A lot of time dumped over and taken out of bounds is Alfred Jenkins. Jenkins claims he was roughed up a little bit. Thinks he was hay hooked. Darn Barkowski got movement this year. Yeah, this is this mobile pocket that Henning had when they were at Washington. The same type of thing that you see Feisman doing a lot of. And let's watch Johnny Poe here and see. If... You're not supposed to ever have a blow to the head. And that was a blow to the head. In all fairness, secondary people work on tackling like this, though, don't they? <laughs> I mean, really, that's a drill. Have a little dummy out there with a little head on and go there and check tackle it. No flag. They're going to let them play today. For you people at home, uh, that's good because you'll really see a game. Andrews is back in the game, the remaining back. He gets the handoff, dances outside, and makes two people miss him and somehow gets to the 27-yard line. Ricky Jackson got him there. Two people flat missed him. That's the type of run you don't see in a highlight film. Just what we were talking about. <laughs> he just he, he gets four or five yards out of a play that should be a loss. Mr. Clark gets away from that one. Now he makes two linebackers miss him in a row. They tackle each other. A reason that Charlie Waters said you don't see him on those highlights is he he gets his yardage eight and ten at a time, the rugged way. Second down and seven. The reverse handoff. As Robinson comes back on the reverse, the H-back getting one of his infrequent carries. Carried the ball two times this year. He said, well, when I get, when they call my number, I want to do some good. That was sniffed out quickly by the New Orleans team. Now that perhaps is to make sure that people start staying at home and don't chase too much on defense. Just to keep them honest. All right, we'll keep you honest. That's the end of the first quarter. A lot of action, no scoring, and we've got 45 minutes left. Hang around, will you? It comes with a long list of standard equipment. Cruise control, air conditioning, a sophisticated stereo, a lighted mirror, power door locks and windows. The Accord LX has everything. Almost. The yacht is optional. Four Door Sedan. And by Miller Highlight. Welcome to Miller Time. There's the conversion ratio on third down attempts. The reason that that's 55 and 6 tenths percent well, why. Yeah, I think it's because they have William Andrews in the backfield. Always, it's usually their third and two. They, very seldom do they get the third and seven. That's what they've got. Third down and seven. Andrews being positioned now by Bartkowski. Junior Miller now being moved over. The play has changed since its inception. Andrews is out of the backfield. Bartkowski going across the middle. Has Bailey wide open. Stacy Bailey has hit hard at the 16-yard line and driven back. Waymer, Waymer nailed him there. A good throw and a good bit of execution by Bartkowski. That's an illegal hit downfield. Billy White shoes Johnson hit by Poe. You see this team is, there's a legitimate rivalry going on between, the, between these two teams, but that route right here that White Shoes ran opened it up for Bailey coming underneath, and he's complaining to the official, and the official just ignores. You can't hit a guy after five yards. Five yards, but did he hit him in the five yard zone? No, it was down. It was seven yards down. Well, Johnson was in the slot. He could have he could have been close. Andrews off the left side maybe gets a couple of yards. Yardage is tough. This is the plus territory that all coaches talk about. Once you get inside the 20, you've got to come away with points. Three, seven, whatever multiples you can get together they need points inside the 20. that's it you can't especially when you get a playoff team you get to the playoffs you've got to be able to come away with points when you get inside here wade phillips the defensive coordinator for the saints said hey the number one thing we've got to do is stop the run and boy you especially got to do it down here and that's bum phillips son right who's a heck of a coach in his own right it's second down and eight driving 
The Falcon with Barkowski. Inside trap play. The fake. Barkowski's going to run with a bootleg. And he gets hit hard at the 10-yard line. Kovac was waiting for him. A little bit of yardage, but a big headache. And he is not exactly a running quarterback. Uh, this is a naked bootleg. He's out there by himself. They had an unbalanced line. They were hoping that the linebackers were shifted over. But Dr. Kovac reads it. Woo. Tries to take his head off. He must be a, a neurosurgeon the way he went for his head. <laughs> There's Dan Henning on the sideline. They're signaling in the play. He is an intense competitor. He gets steely eyes, their coach does for Atlanta on game day. He's a lot different on Sunday than he is on Friday or Saturday. And you notice that there's timeout called on the field. That's Bob Harrison, assistant coach, calling the plays. Now, we mentioned that that uh, New Orleans is the only team in the National Football Conference that calls their, the quarterback calls his own plays. And then just contrastly, you got Dan Henning visiting with Bartkowski. Saw something they didn't like. It's all debatable, and that's what football is all about. We don't know who's going to win either. No score in the second period. When I first bought this ranch, I could work it with one horse. Thirteenth play of the drive. It's third and five on the 10-yard line. Started on the 35, the Atlanta 35. This is a pretty good drive, but you can't come away from the well drive this time. Big play early in this game. Markowski straight back. He's got time. He delivers caught by Billy White Shoes Johnson for a first down inside the five. Johnny Poe tackling there, and White Shoes is helping up the guy that just tackled him. Johnson's on a short divide. He fakes like he's going across the middle and then comes back. Markowski's looking to him all the way. Comes back to the outside. That's he working on Poe. Well, they got a running battle going right now. Poe is some good defensive back, too, out of Missouri. White Shoes Johnson, Mr. Animation. He's the best older player to have around young players in the history of the game. Very positive man. He's the Ernie Banks of the football, of the NFL. He just loves to play. And practice. And practice. Here it is, first and goal from the far. Falcons on a little bit of a roll. Andrews takes it to the shadow of the goal line. Got very low and just kept driving. He is not a big, awesome man. He's not as big as, like, let's say, John Riggins, but he has the wheels of a 250-pounder. Up the middle. Big block by Van Note. Power running back down here near the goal line. That was one of those unbalanced lines we mentioned. Maybe we can get to show you that later. Dirt Winston made a saving tackle. Our number 31 would have been over the double strike. It's second down, and call it one. They're stacked in there. Inside, Andrews is hit behind the line of scrimmage by Ricky Jackson. That is a very large offensive line, and the Saints that time just tore it up. 57 will be coming in on the right-hand side of your screen. They had that over unbalanced line again, and they're adjusting to it with their linebackers, and Jackson just kind of cut underneath and tried to make the play. I tell you, this is a third and one. This separates the men from the boys right here. Jackson out of Pittsburgh, hard-nosed football player. And I think it was that passer. And big enough to be a defensive tackle almost at 235. Third down, and call it one. Andrew scores. Second touchdown rushing of the year for Andrews. 65-yard drive, 16 plays, and very few people are standing and cheering, but they're the Atlanta fans that made the trip. 10,000 of them made it to. They're running on the left side, the two All-Pros over there, Mike Ken and R.C. Thielman, blow them out. Three times they run up, the, run up the middle, and they get the touchdown. It pays off for them. Luckhurst now to attempt the extra point. He's missed two of them. He didn't miss this one. Maybe the Englishman likes it indoors. Maybe he likes the artificial surface. William Andrews, he likes the end zone. It's 7-0 Falcons. Waters here, two defensive backs from a long time ago, at least for me, a little bit later for Charlie. Good game here, 7-0. And New Orleans is turned on by their team, but right now 70,000 are sort of
just sitting and buzzing, waiting. Luckhurst kickoff, it's a short kick. Austin is back at the 14-yard line. It's Duckett, Duckett has the ball out to the 27-yard line. A short kick in good field position for the Saints. Don't forget, CBS Sports Saturday returns next weekend with a really exciting show. You'll see the 70th running of the Remsen Stakes for two-year-olds featuring Devil's Bag, unbeaten five stars going into the race. He could become only the second two-year-old history to win Horse of the Year honors. John Madden will also explore how several former NFL players are coping with physical problems caused by football. It's all next week on CBS Sports Saturday, so check your local listings. Is Mad the story on featuring you? I've got so many injuries, it would be a series. First down and 10, the toss back to George Rogers. And Rogers has the crowd cheering again out to the 35. Fulton Kuykendall driving the big fella out of bounds. Now, he's a trimmed down version of what we used to see. He used to play at 227, 226. He's about 218 this year and a very, very good looking runner. Boy, he was sluggish last year in the strike. The strike year really hurt George Rogers, but he's trimmed down. There's a shot of Fulton Kuykendall. His, his wife is expecting a baby back home. Fulton Kuykendall's? Yeah. That'll be good. Wonder what he'll call it. Fulton Jr., I Junior. guess. Junior. Second down and one. A gain of nine by Rogers. His double falls and is pounced on at the 35-yard line. Now, here's a fellow that plays on AstroTurf all the time, and he stumbled. Well, that's hard to explain. They're keeping the ball on the ground right here. A little counter play. Well, he tripped. He tripped. He tripped Dave, Dave Wilson. Uh, the new quarterback. The new quarterback. Just a little. That's that's the difference when you're not used to handing that ball off to that guy. little misdirection play and brings up now a third down and four yards to go. Third down and four. Growth and Duckett are in the game. Rodgers is out. Obviously thinking pass. Wayne Wilson is in number 30. And of course we're looking at Wilson, the quarterback. Being chased and a safety blitz caught the quarterback and he almost threw up an INT that might have resulted in a touchdown. He was going for Wilson coming out of the backfield but didn't have time for the play to evolve. Atlanta is not a blitzing team. He sure get in here. They blitz this time like they know what they're doing. Coming from the backside, Kenny Johnson gets a blast on Barkowski, and the ball falls to the turf. And so the punter is in the game, Erksleben. He averaged over 42 yards last year. He has a 45-yard punt today. And at one time, when he was at Texas, was the greatest kicking sensation in the history. Oh, this is a tremendous hang time. It must be at least five seconds. Johnson at the 25. He gets away, and now he's down at the 24. Good coverage by New Orleans special teams. Monte was down under that to make the tackle. And Erksleben put it up near the roof of the Astrodome. 273 feet up there. Before halftime, 7-0 Atlanta leading on Andrews' touchdown burst. Gerald Riggs is in there right now, the second year number one draft takes the handoff. Riggs bounces outside. He's got speed and power and gets to almost the 35-yard line. Kovacs took a ride with him. Big man, Gerald Riggs. That's H-back 33, Bo Robinson. He lined up on the line of scrimmage right there, making a block on Russell Gary, the strong safety. And look how his tenacity stays with him just enough to break Riggs through there. Good play by the H-back, the Henning back, we call it. And of course, Bo Robinson, we talked with him yesterday, and uh, he just says, I'm glad to be starting. I'll do whatever they want to do with me. Second down and one, Riggs cuts and gets easily the first down out over the 40. Whitney Paul hanging onto the big back. Is, is everybody going to end up going to the single back offense and two tight ends with Boy, motion it, and all it that? It sure looks like that's the way the game is evolving right now with the way the rule changes are. Of course, the Super Bowl team... Uh, started that of course i guess that at least to, to show people you could win with it mr gibbs huh it just it, no matter what washington type of attack the super bowl team has you'll find five or six teams trying it the next year and of course henning came to these atlanta falcons after helping mr gibbs set up that offense of washington so that's what you're seeing Riggs fighting for yardage maybe gets a couple there was no hole at that time jackson and kovach 
double teamed it. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcasts or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of, of the New Orleans Saints and the National Football League is strictly prohibited. You're looking at a happy man, happily married man and a father and a, lives on a lake in suburban Atlanta and loves the town and the game and his coaching staff and his teammates. I'm talking about Steve Bartkowski. Six for 12 so far. Second down, eight. God. And it looks like the Saints were off sides. They must have moved five people up into the slots on the line of scrimmage and looked to me like they touched early. Looks like Dirk Winston wanted to take the snap from center. I'd be inclined to give it to him. <laughs> Saints are taking an aggressive stance right now, trying to make something happen on defense that's uncharacteristic of them to blitz on second and nine. Wyatt is marching it off. Approachment, 57. Second down. Number 57 made the move. Ricky Jackson moved into that slot. Obviously, he's telling the official he absolutely knows nothing about the game of football. <laughs> Second down and three, call it. Remaining back is Gerald Riggs. Andrews is getting a rest. In the flat, White Shoes Johnson being chased, corralled, and plummeted on the far sideline. Russell Gary was waiting for White Shoes. Just threw it out there to him by himself, didn't have any blockers out to protect him, just to see if he can shake and bake and maybe get enough for the first down. <laughs> he's been doing it for a long time. He wears those, that tape all over his hands. I'll tell you what, Dave, he's got to redo his shoulder pads, too. Let's see if we can get a shot. Look, look at all the tape on his fingers and stuff. Is that legal? I, I guess it is. I they, you they, couldn't put a foreign substance on your hands anymore. Well, you can't put, well, stick them. You can wear gloves. Well, that's foreign. It, even even Stacy Bailey's got little tape on his fingers now. <laughs> the Falcons have converted four of seven third downs, but this is third and eight. This is a long one. Markowski, he's got time. And Riggs makes a great catch at the 34-yard line. A leaping catch by the big running back right over Ricky Jackson to catch it. That's some play. You see Frank Watley, 49, sitting there. He's bewildered. He doesn't understand why in the world this guy holds on the ball. Riggs right down the middle. Watley, 49, coming in the screen. Hits him high, goes for the ball. But I tell you, that's great concentration. What's, what's the blocking like? A lot of, a lot of good protection. Four-man rush, little stunt right there. Good pickup by Atlanta's offensive line. You know, that's one of the reasons why they haven't had very many sacks as of late in the last three games. They're blocking the stunts differently in the front line. There's three or four ways of doing it, and they're trying to incorporate new ways of doing it. Markowski rolling along and threw a beautiful strike moments ago, seconds ago. First and ten. Markowski with a lot of time outside and knocked away at the last minute, intended for Jenkins. Boy, Johnny Poe timed it perfectly. Beautiful play by a defensive back. Flag on the play. A little holding, perhaps. Wyant gives the early call of this, and we'll find out the man to be named later. Remember the old days when they wouldn't tell anybody your own coach didn't know who had done it half the time? Ralph Neely down in Dallas made a career out of holding. <laughs> used to hold five or six times a game so they get his uh, number entered, yeah. called out during the ball game. You mean holding was his whole life? Right? Yeah, that was it. Holding, number 66, first down. The first Falcon penalty of the day, Warren Bryant, the trimmed down monster at right tackle. He was holding Ricky Jackson, who was blitzing from the outside at right that time. He caught him off balance. He had to rush out and grab him. Better than getting your quarterback hurt. Especially that quarterback. First down and 20 to go on the 42. Barkowski long calling. He's being rushed. Barkowski throws a big rush right in his face as Ricky Jackson, the man you said likes to blitz, came in a hurry. And there's a Falcon on the field. He's getting up slowly. Scully, the right guard. We mentioned that Jackson blitzed the last time. See him on the left side of the screen, 57. He comes in here and overpowers. 61, John Scully, and putting pressure on Barkowski. I tell you, this that might be end up being the difference in the ballgame. What kind of pressure can they put on Barkowski? If you give that guy time, he can pick a defense apart. And only three interceptions 
will go along with 17 touchdown passes. Now they're yelling defense. Second down and 20, now the flags are down. Losing a little poise with all that pressure on all those blitzes, two blitzes in a row. Illegal procedure. Second flag. This drive is going the wrong way, according to Henning and people down in the Solid South on Peachtree. False start, number 66, second down. Warren Bryant having trouble with his adjustment there as I think Ricky uh, Jackson is faking blitzing and then backing off. 5-4-54 left before the halftime. A 7-0 lead. And this game, I promise, is going to explode in points. Second down and 25. Markowski quickly to Bailey, who is cut down from behind inside the 40. A tough tackle. Ricky Jackson really wiped him out. Just trying to move the ball down slowly, not trying to get too much at once. Maybe get it within field goal range is what Atlanta's idea is right here. The opponents of the Atlanta Falcons, the New Orleans Saints, they've changed completely. As soon as Bum Phillips came in, this is only his third season. And last season was an aborted thing for everybody, you know, with strike and all. But he's changed the whole personality. There's a confidence, like a hometown team atmosphere with this bunch. They've only drafted five players last year. Look, I don't need new players. I just want to do good with the ones I have. Bartkowski rolling. Third down and a lot. And he's being chased and dumps it off. Andrews. At the 35, a good tackle by Whitney Paul. Short of the 30-yard line. That's some play by a linebacker. That was a great play by Whitney Paul to save Andrews. And there's, a, there's a flag on the field. They may have roughed the passer by Kasky. Remember, he did roll out. I thought he's not protected after he gets out of that pocket. He should be fair game. Did you see Wyatt? The official just stumbled and fell out there. <laughs> Tripped over the line. Well, the players can do it. I guess the officials are allowed to. Attacking it on. Uh oh, attack it from the, from the play on. Let's get the call from Freddie Wyatt. Personal foul. Roughing the passer, hit in the head. Number 98. Oh, that explains First it. First down. Reggie Lewis hit Number Markowski in the head. Even though he runs out of the pocket, you can never hit. You're not supposed to hit anybody in the head. That's the key, isn't it? Even That's it. It's the head because Barkowski was out of the pocket. And what you said is apropos. You could go ahead and tackle him. A fair game. But not behead him. It's an automatic first down on the 17-yard line. Riggs is in. He has the ball. Now he's being ridden and gang tackled at the 17-yard line by a bunch. Well, he's got tremendous lateral movement for a big fella. Well, he just faked out Jim Kovacs. Just, he just fell to the ground. Number 52 just fell on the ground when Riggs gave him a couple little shakes. But aggressive move by Frank Watlett to come up and close on the outside. He's very aggressive at the safety position, and I see them trying to attack that later on in the day. Set up a play-action pass and throw it over the safety's head. A few people are venting their spleen about the call on roughing and hitting the passer in the head. Oh, great defensive play. Riggs tried to get some yardage. Lewis and Clark, Lewis and Clark, two great explorers of our American heritage, and along with Dirt Winston, gang tackled Riggs, and he didn't even make the line of scrimmage. Play's getting a little sloppy. Infraction against the men in red and white. Illegal motion, right guard declined. John Scully, Third down. John Scully was detected of illegal motion. Play was run up the middle. See if we can figure out what happened, 99. Tony Elliott just penetrated and beat the block of Thielman. And then 10 other states pop along there. left before halftime. Falcons with a 7-0 lead. Markowski back. He's being raced and he's hit behind. Reggie Lewis around the corner and a sack. 
Parkowski never saw him coming. You won't see him until late, and Parkowski never sees him on the right-hand side of your screen, right in the back. Barkowski was lucky to hold on to the ball. You know, they got a lot of lot of traps on this Saint team, and a lot of guys have five and four traps. And Reggie Lewis, that's his fifth sack of the year. They have a lot of guys that play. All five of their or six of their defensive linemen get involved. Good defensive series. Luckhurst now is trying a field goal from the 43 yard. It'll be a 43 yarder. It looks awfully good. He thinks so. It is good. And so, in the plus territory, the Falcons came out with something. Not the brass ring, but they got a field goal. It's 10-0, and the Saints people want some action. It's become quite a series. Atlanta won 35-0 last year over in Atlanta, then coming here, the Saints won 35-6, and early in the year it was 1917 on the last play. This is a good series. Here's Luckhurst kickoff now. Austin and Duckett are waiting. That is Duckett. 25 and good field position almost to the 30 yard line and the Saints office now has got to pick up the slack. Wilson has gone all the way and Snake Staber didn't even come to practice on Friday or Saturday. NFL don't forget next week now on the NFL Saturday Green Bay and Minnesota Anyway, we'll cover that. It's going to be a great sports time here on CBS, Saturday or Sunday. The drop back by Wilson. Dumped it to George Rogers. Out over the 30 to the 32-yard line. 3.21 left before halftime. Here's that CBS Sports Sunday. Don't forget the doubleheader day on CBS. The NFL today starts it all. Then Green Bay at Minnesota, followed by New Orleans, the Saints, at San Francisco, you talk about crucial games. This division is a bucket of worms right now. Nobody has come out and said, I'm the champion. All that starts at 12.30 Eastern time. This is an important series for Dave Wilson to try to get some points on the ball before, before halftime. Second down and seven. Ten nothing shutout so far. Atlanta controlling the tempo. Wilson being chased and unloads it out of bounds. Province uh, chased him out, and here's old Bum Phillips. He takes good times and bad times, but he really likes to put a quarterback in the game and leave him there for four quarters. Because I don't care if he throws ten interceptions. I'm not going to pull him tomorrow to try to put Kenny Stabler back in the ball game. It's important for him to stand there, see if he can pull it out on his own. Maybe he could ruin a quarterback to jerk him out and hurt his confidence. And you know he was adamant about that philosophy. And of course, Stabler, Snake has injured ribs and had to leave in the first quarter of the game a week ago and this young man had three touchdown passes and almost pulled the game out third down he stumbles wilson stumbles falls and now he's dropped by a, a herd of men there john rady i think getting the first contact atlanta's showing blitz you see curry coming on the inside and Blaine guys in 34 coming in the other side, and it it hurt us. It hurt his poise right there. Dave Wilson saw it, read it, and tried to get back too much too much in a hurry, and it, it, that's the reason why he stumbled. Billy White shoes Johnson checking with the official, and of course Erksleben is standing back on the 10-yard line, and you may see him really ride this one. It's a high kick, almost blocked by Atlanta. Johnson, no fair catch at the 37. Billy White shoes. Short journey to the 47-yard line. Philadelphia still leading Dallas 10-3. Tony Franklin got a field goal, and Rafe Septian got one for the Cowboys. A 4-6 hang time on that last punt. Another score, New England leading Buffalo before halftime, 7-0. Don't forget, at halftime, the NFL Today will bring you up to date on all the scores around football. Cincinnati taking it out on Houston, 24-0. Green Bay... Over Cleveland, 14 to seven, not at half. San Diego with that defense of theirs already checked out for the year. Pittsburgh, 20 to three over San Diego and they're not at half yet. Here we have a 10 nothing game. Falcons looking much more like a contending team, at least in our viewpoint. And of course, the Saints are already a good team and they're very much in it, but they gotta get some points. 
Bartkowski being rushed and now tackled. Like Derlin Moore or Frank Warren might have been the one. Number 73 came around the corner, and those defensive linemen just kept coming that time. Good effort. To say there's a lot of guys that contribute to the to the to the front line of the Saints. Credit to Tony Elliott right there, 99, flushing Barkowski up into the pocket. But good coverage downfield as Frank Warren makes the sack. The third sack for the Saints coming in. You can see that. Atlanta's had two. Barkowski has been hit pretty hard. The Gerald Riggs on the draw play. Riggs into New Orleans territory. Russell Gary coming up quickly. A two minute warning, which will save a timeout for number 10 as Barkowski goes to check with Henning. And the defense, of course, was going to steady itself. It's 10 0 Atlanta. Hi, I'm Ronnie Cole, and here are horse riders. We knew that. They came in with, what, 36 sacks? Yeah, number one in the league in sacks. And they've got three more today. And Bartkowski we used to take sacks as sort of a convenience so he wouldn't throw the interceptions, but these have not been on purpose. Saints have been putting the rush on him. Here comes the rush. Bartkowski throwing. Uh, out for an intercepted by Poe. Johnny Poe intercepts and gets into Atlanta territory, and he read the sidelines all the way. Well, that was a beautiful interception. Watch the way Barkowski telegraphs where he's going to throw this ball. Poe lays off on him just enough. Everybody in the stadium knows where he's throwing. A great break by Poe right in front of the receiver. This might be the thing that gets New Orleans going. This is the sixth interception of the year by Poe. He's second in the league in interceptions. It was intended for Alfred Jenkins, who runs a good deep sideline, but Poe was really waiting for it, huh? The fourth interception, the first interception of the year that Bertkowski had was also against the New Orleans Saints. Some kind of a year. A Pro Bowl year for Johnny Poe. Five and four the Saints are. They might be thinking uh, even going to Tampa to play a game. Everything's a possibility right now. Talking about the Super Bowl is still very much in the dreams of a lot of ball clubs. The Saints amazingly uh, five and four with with the turnover takeaway ratio. They're minus six. Minus six, and they're third in the league in interceptions, but still minus six in takeaways. The Falcons came in plus six, but they just had one of those knocked off. The toss back to Ro Rogers. George Rogers breaks out. Rogers to the 35, to the 30, to the 28-yard line. Now the crowd is happy. New Orleans has got to do something to get it going. Number 30 is in there, Wayne Wilson, instead of Hokie Cajon. We didn't know whether Wayne Wilson was going to be playing a good block to the outside and great running by George Rogers. Oh, I like the way he took on Pridemore, the tackler. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Used to have nightmares about that, George oh, Shire. Those, those backs, those big backs will punish those defensive backs. When they say get down, that's what they're talking about. You don't tackle those big fellas high. A 20-yard burst by Rogers. And suddenly Atlanta is hanging on. Here's the Washington. Rogers rips to the 17-yard line. Kikendall and Curry barely stopping number 38. Timeout. The crowd is up. You see 63 Edelman pulling to the outside and Leon Gray making a block on Yates. The Saints. The devil made him do it. 135 left before half. It's 10 0 Atlanta. But look out. A lonely, troubled child can have. National Football League, the New Orleans Saints, and Gumbo Four. They're a great mascot here. Have you seen that big dog today? Yes. He's walking around with carries that little jug aren't underneath into, his. Aren't you into natural things like dogs and animals and stuff like that? At an indoor stadium on an artificial mm -hmm. turf, dogs running around. He, sleeps, some problems, he sleeps through a lot of these games, too, you know, even when they're exciting. The Saints are knocking. It's first and 10 down on the 17-yard line. Wilson's got all the way at quarterback. Inside handoff. Number 30, Wayne Wilson. Gets to the five-yard line. He wasn't supposed to play, but you can't keep a good running back from getting in there. Boy, this guy bothers the, the Falcon defense more then Rodgers, number 30, Wayne Wilson, as Dave Wilson's visiting with 
Bum Phillips. OA Bum Phillips. <laughs> well, tell you one thing, he couldn't do any shampoo commercials, could he? <laughs> Oh, Bum, as a guy's got it in perspective right there, Bum Phillips. Who's this other person? King that's, Hill. That's Young Phillips, huh? No, it's not Young Phillips on the sidelines. Bum Phillips is working with Young Wilson, who came out of Illinois, lost his senior year of eligibility. He's only played, actually, as a starter, three seasons of football. So he's having to sort of learn on the job. And the crowd right now is really calling for the Saints to get on the board. They want it. First and 10 on the five. Don't forget halftime from New York. Brent and Irv with all the scores and highlights. And trainers, the unsung heroes. And that's for sure, they're like a chaplain for players in football, in well, football. Kept me going for five years longer than I should have been. Yeah, they're NFL. usually very honest with the players, you know, because if the players find out, they're not. They don't cooperate with him. First down and goal. A 10 0 Atlanta lead so far. Wilson going for the end zone. A flag is dropped as Brenner couldn't get high enough for the errant throw. A lot of pressure on young Wilson. Atlanta is notorious for getting turnovers and fumbles and interceptions down here in this plus territory, and they couldn't work their magic on that play. Wilson's making sure that he makes the right call on this. Pass interference against defense. No good. The ball landed out of bounds. Not catchable. Freddie Wyatt declared the ball was too high and badly overthrown, and therefore he couldn't catch it. That's the way the rule reads. It's in a judgment call by the official. There was interference, but the ball is just completely out of the picture. So it's not catchable, so there is no interference. I think it's a good rule. I like it. At least it gives a defender a chance to, to play the football that's really thrown at it them. It gives them a free interference penalty is what it gives them. Yeah, but that ball wasn't catchable. The quarterback made the mistake. He, could have, he maybe could have, Super could have taken over. Back to Wayne Wilson. The 6 TD rushing for Wayne Wilson, and none more appreciated than this one. Wow, two plays, and he's made a contribution on both of them. Good block by Hokey Cajun's 46 on the outside. That's what sets it up, and great pushing by the offensive line. He hadn't played in three weeks, and he bothers the, the Falcons, and he bothered them on that play. They said he's, Kikadol said he's just a good all-around football player. This is the song that they've been singing around town all week, and now they may sing it again. We'll try to give it to you in a little while. The extra point is good. Hey, the interception and the old turnover, the INT. Turn that game around. That's what the Saints needed at this time in the ball game, and something that Barkowski is just not part of his program this year, and he telegraphed the pass, and a great interception by Poe. And the capitalistic offense by the Saints takes it down and scores. It's going to be that way to the end of the day, Brookshire. Now, Barkowski has burned one time out in the first half. And I think the Falcons have uh, one time out left to try to get in position to perhaps get three of those points back on a Luckhurst field goal attempt. A 1-17 left before half. In what sort of simmered in the first quarter with no score, the Falcons had a good drive and sent Andrews in. Then they got a field goal by Luckers. And then the interception, and suddenly the Saints are turned on. Well, the Saints had that one good drive and big play by the Atlanta, big play defense, blocked the field goal. That was a turning point in the ball game. It was kind of dull there for a while from the Saints side, and Atlanta took over the momentum, and it's now it's back on the Saints side. What? What will uh, the Swede do with this kickoff? What will Anderson do? Will he kick it deep? I think, think he'll kick, kick it deep. There's no need to try the onside kick and give up field position and give the Falcons a, a shorter distance to go to score. Riggs is back in the safety spot thinking it's going to be a deep kick to run it back. Let's see what this left-hander from Scandinavia does with it. Boy, he kicks a big one. Wow, what a kick. What a kickoff. Nine yards deep in the end zone. Woo! Now that is a leg. And 
you can see the crowd reacting. This is the song that's sort of been being played all over this area about these states. Of course, they... <laughs> what is that? Brad Edelman right there. He wants to be a rock and roll star. And they took three or four of the Saints into the studio and recorded this song. A couple of the other ones. Who were some of the other ones? Well, you got uh, Louis Oubre and Reggie right. Lewis and Dave Wehmer. Reggie, Reggie Lewis, Lewis says, hey, I'm the bass man. I go boom, 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 boom. Funny bit. I'd like to see them record a few. Bartkowski to Riggs. Riggs is nailed at the 21-yard line. Kovac made a tough tackle. Remember, one time out left, and you can see the seconds going. I don't think Atlanta's in too big a hurry to try to move the ball downfield with the momentum change here in this stadium. You can feel that the Saints kind of have control of what's going on right now, so you're not seeing the Atlanta team take it down. They just want to go regroup at halftime. You know, Jimmy, yeah, who that, who that, what? Who that, they say, wait, who that, they say they going to beat them Saints, who that? Who that? <laughs> now that's... That's that, talent, isn't it? That's some good Cajun food outside the rigs. Rigs hit hard, and suddenly the Saints defense and offense are both really humming. Whitney Paul and Clark get on that tackle. The crowd now anticipates for the second half. We're going to get after these guys from the Western Division. And they don't like the Atlanta Falcons. 10,000 people come over from Atlanta, and when they played over in Atlanta, they said about 10,000 people from New Orleans made that trip. when neither team really likes one another until the ball game is over. That's the end of the first half. It's going to be a good second half, folks. Atlanta 10, Saints 7, but New Orleans was coming on. That's the end of the first half. The score's 10-7. Welcome back to New York. I'm Brent Musburger with Irv Cross. And Irv, the AFC East could really tighten up today, and there is a new challenger looming in the AFC Central. The New England Patriots could move to within a game if they beat the Bills and if the Dolphins lose later to San Francisco on the West Coast. The Patriots are dominating the Bills right now by 14 points. The Pittsburgh Steelers, of course, are in command in the AFC Central. 20-3, to they are beating back the San Diego Chargers in the second quarter. The Green Bay Packers, the schizophrenic Green Bay Packers, have exploded again today, and they lead Cleveland 21-7 in the second quarter. Cincinnati, the new challenge in the AFC Central. With Pete Johnson at fullback, they are a different team on offense, and they are all over Houston, which is still looking for its first victory of the season. Meanwhile, the L.A. Raiders are meeting resistance against the Kansas City Chiefs. It is 7-0. Mark Wilson has thrown a touchdown pass in that game to running back Frank Hawkins. That is the only score so far. The Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles have just gone to the half, and they are tied at 10. Irv, pick up the action. You know, one of the things the Eagles wanted to do, of course, Brent, was show aggressive defensive line play in motion on pass offense. I hear Jaworski hits. Mike Quick for the first touchdown of the day, a 20-yarder, and the Eagles look like they had things going for them. You know Tom Landry is a guy who could figure these things out, but watch this. Here's what the Eagle defense wanted to do, penetrate, force Dorsett to run parallel to the line of scrimmage and throw him for a loss. They played aggressive defense all the first, first half. Here again, Danny White looking upfield, can't find anybody, is sacked, and the Eagle defense is simply sky high. You know, Brent, the Dallas Cowboys won all eight of their games this year by coming from behind. Newsom takes his touchdown pass, a 12-yarder, to not at 10-10 at halftime. And even when they finally lost, they were in that wild shootout against the Raiders. They seemingly are never out of a game, are they? You know, Landry does a great job of making adjustments. Everybody comes out after the Cowboys aggressively, but he sits back there calmly, finds out what they're doing, and then... Picks away at him. There's another calm coach. Wears a cowboy hat down there in New Orleans. He fell behind Atlanta by 10 points, but he's put a touchdown up on the board. Bum Phillips and the Saints now trail by three. They are, of course, at the half, and many of you are watching that game here on CBS. Here is some of the action from down at the Superdome. Kicking game today has certainly been instrumental. And Irv, here comes a fake. Well, you know, you wonder why the defense wouldn't check the kicker. You're supposed to check the kicker. They didn't. And as a result, New Orleans is going to suffer here. I would have to say that Atlanta is finally catching on to Dan Henning's system. William Andrews, of course, has been a force down there for a long time. 
but Hennings even had Steve Bartkowski rolling left, rolling right today. Now here's the touchdown, and it is Wayne Wilson. He's one of those players, Irv, who has a great instinct for getting the ball into the end zone. Good, strong, straight-ahead runner, but he has that, you're right, great instinct for getting the ball in the end zone. He sees daylight, boom, cuts to it quickly. Tampa Bay and Minnesota. Of course, the rest of you are watching this, and the Minnesota Vikings could be beaten up for this game. Ted Brown went out. Fortunately, the x-rays were negative on his injured right shoulder. Darren Nelson, Dave Casper, they have not been playing because of injuries. Yes, the Vikings did block another punt, could not get a touchdown this time. They settled for a safety. And finally, the NFL today has learned that Steve DeBerg has been negotiating with the New Jersey Generals. There are reports elsewhere today that the Denver gold of that new league had been after Steve. Steve said his only visits with that team were social and that his agent has had contract talks with him. It's a treat to beat your face. Remember the old songs? We're in the South. We're in the Superdome. It's a 10-7 ball game, and the Saints are marching in. Today, you need an oil this good. You need poker. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Radio Shack your Christmas electronic store. We're back in a beautiful place in a, one of the great cities of the world where this man has been here only three seasons. One of those strike field. He was made general manager a year ago in February and John Meekham Jr. just couldn't have had a, couldn't have made a better move. This city has had one time when the Saints were an eight and eight ball club, the rest of the time they've been struggling and yet the people have been so loyal that he has taken this team out of the woods and they know that they've got a team that they can be very proud of. And I'll tell you one thing, I could have played for Bum Phillips. I just, I'm gonna play 13 years with this kind of a fellow as my coach. The, let's look at those stats, Charlie Waters, from the first half of what doesn't look like an exciting game score-wise, but pretty good contest. Well, the biggest difference right there is that the, the yards passing, the Saints have only thrown it for 62, 62 yards in the time of possession. Atlanta's had the ball for an awful lot of long time compared to the Saints. It's actually pretty close. That one turnover, of course, led to the New Orleans Saints touchdown. That was the interception of Barkowski's pass by Johnny Poe. And uh, I guess it's still, we talk about turnovers and takeaway and giveaways, and I'll be darned if it's not the most important stat almost on, on any scoreboard. Oh, in any tight ball game, you'll see a turnover, a block punt, block field goal, and we think those are turnovers too. Both Tom Brookshire and I feel like those are just as important as, a, as an interception and a fumble recovery. It, in a tight game, that's what turns it around. And another thing too, in any big ball game, the third quarter is the most important quarter in a ball game because it's the, who can take charge from this the last 30 minutes. That's, both of these teams do very well in the third quarter. And the coach has had a chance to make some adjustments at halftime. Henning's got a great young staff over there of people that he's collected. He's been around football for 20 years. This is his golden chance in the shot. And I'll tell you, for a team that's four and five, they're one of the most awesome ball clubs around because they're a better football team than that. Well, they really are. They've been in so many ball games. They've, they haven't lost any game by more than seven points. And they're showing the day that they, they are competitors. And of course, the, the Falcons will kick off to start the second half. And the Saints will have a chance uh, with Kenny Duckett and Cliff Austin back there. Austin's number 47. Duckett, of course, has really helped the Saints. His great kickoff in the first game to set up that field goal that the Saints used to beat the Atlanta Falcons. So here we go. Luckhurst with his hand up, his left hand up to Here's the kick. It's sort of a short kick. Duckett at the seven. Duckett being chased and hit right on the 20-yard line. Good special teams play by the Falcons. And it'll be a, an 80-yard drive that will be facing the New Orleans Saints uh, offensive team. Here we are up here, Tom Brookshire with Charlie Waters. And uh, Charlie, a good defensive play or just not very good offense so far? What do you think is wrong with the Saints right now? Well, yeah, it's the Saints, the quarterback, and his name. they don't really have any continuity to their attack. And I think that the uh, seeing Wayne Wilson in there at the, at the fullback position is, is the big difference in this ball game because all of a sudden, George Rogers started running good when Wayne Wilson was in at the fullback position. So we'll see how that evolves as the game goes on. But uh, Wilson, the young quarterback, he's calling his own plays. Do you think that maybe we're looking at an injured player that's that is Duckett that's down, I believe, that ran back to kickoff, and he's been administered to. 
But actually, should they be helping the young quarterback by maybe calling a few plays? Well, yeah. Sometimes it's great to have your quarterback call your own plays, but when you have a young guy in there that's not used to reading what's going on, you know, maybe be helped to help him a little bit. The shot of Kenny Duckett right here. Let's see what what happened uh, to, to cause him to lay down there on the turf. I know he got hit hard. You know, Kenny is a guy that's a uh, he's a diabetic. He has to take insulin shots twice daily. Oh, boy, that is some wedge breaker that came through there. Let's see who that was that made the tackle. Rich Dixon, 51, smashed him, and he it looks like it's a knee. Boy, he is a big play performer, and they'd like to see him play more, but Bunk says, look, I'm not going to put him in there. I'm not real sure how much he can take with, with his condition, but he is a big play performer. He had that 61-yarder, as we mentioned, that gave the Saints the chance to kick the field goal and win the first game. He's on the sidelines. We'll keep you posted on how serious that injury is. The first down play by Wilson in the second half. The toss to George Rogers. Good block on the outside, but good defensive play by Johnson. Kenny Johnson came up quickly and got the big back running parallel with the line of scrimmage and finished him off. You know, you start off the second half, Atlanta starts off the second half with an aggressive coverage on their kickoff team, and that's an indication, if that's an indicator of how this third quarter is going to go, it looks like Atlanta wants to take charge on the defensive side, and there you come back with a first run and play, and they're very aggressive and push the guy back, and they, maybe they want to take control of this ball game. Kenny Johnson's brother is Jimmy Johnson, who's the first-round draft choice of the Rams a few years ago out of Texas. That's pretty good secondary the family has. Yes, sir. They can put it on you. All right, a loss of two. Let's call it second down and 12. Wilson calling his own plays. The misdirection handoff to Rodgers, who belched to the 25-yard line, close to it. We saw him get 206 yards rushing against St. Louis and made a 76-yard run look like a 10-yarder. He is a great running back out of South Carolina. Heisman Trophy winner in 1980. NCAA rushing champion that year. Yeah, and he took his personal life and had some problems with a drug involvement and owned up to it, straightened it out. And I'll tell you one thing, I'm very proud of him, and he ought to be of himself. He's done a heck of a job. Third down and six. Call it five to go. Over the middle, Wilson's throw is very low. It'll be short of the first down. Growth, I believe, made the diving catch. He's got good hands, the little guy from Bowling Green. He had to go down low to catch it. He's got a baseball background. You know, most of those guys are wide receivers. Guys that have a baseball background, they understand the fly of the ball. He was drafted by the Cubs. Either that or pickpockets. They can be either one. I always felt like receivers were, you know, one step from just picking your pocket all the time. There's the bum. Well, there's a guy that's got things in perspective at training camp this year. They had a country and western band come in and won the perform they didn't have a place to set up so he cut four marginal players and made room for the band to perform <laughs> he's, Just make he's, sure a, he's a player's coach but i tell you he can turn franchises around okay Eric Slavin is going to kick now billy white shoes johnson's waiting for it it's a good kick it's not a tremendously high kick johnson trapped marty had him as soon as he touched it i believe or johnson did and now the ball is fumbled and it breaks down into Keystone Cups. 38-yarder from the line of scrimmage. Bobby Johnson was down early. There's Bobby right there. Extracurricular stuff. It was ruled dead at somewhere short of the 30-yard line. It's 10-7, and we're sitting on it. We're waiting for it to happen. 12-26 left in the third. Ford Escort. It's engineered with four-wheel independent suspension for a smoother ride than this Japanese import. It's engineered with more passenger room than this Japanese import. Plus, Escort has more standard features than this Japanese import. And now with the new available two-liter diesel engine, Ford Escort is engineered for better mileage ratings than this Japanese import. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? A Christmas gift from Radio Shack. We got this TRS-80 Color Computer 2 on sale. Only $159.95. Instant loading program packs make it a, a game arcade. arcade. A home manager. An educational center. And we're learning to program. It has a typewriter quality keyboard. And it's expandable. Radio Shack has a Christmas sale we can all enjoy. The TRS-80 Color Computer 2. $159.95. Only at Radio Shack. Where color computing starts as low as $79.95. 
Can quarterback Rick Neuheisel take UCLA one step closer to the Rose Bowl? They face Pac-10 rival Arizona. NCAA football next Saturday on CBS Sports. A 10-7 game, Atlanta now with the first offensive series of the second half. Markowski intercepted once, sacked three times, but with a three-point lead. The ball is on the 39-yard line. William Andrews bucks it straight in. Gentlemen! If you please, this is a private fight. The Marquis of Queensbury rules will be observed on all occasions. Yeah, the Marquis of Queensbury rules, mind you, now, Squire. Okay with me, McAleen. <laughs> Thanks. Not belligerents will kindly remain in neutral. Now, shake hands and come out fighting. I thank you. Do you hear that, everybody? The Marquis of Queensbury Rule. No, no, the Marquis of Queensbury Rule. Marquis of Queensbury Rule. <laughs> Mr. Thornton is a married man, sir. Who cares about him? If that big bellowing bully concerns me, I'm the best man in the industry, as though I didn't know that. Hold up, Alan Rowe. Tell him to send the inspectors out here. Send them your pastors to read it. It's right here. Alan Rowe. Sets up the screen. Causes for a penalty, huh, when the guy decides not to take the fake? Why would you hold on a screen? You want the guy to go on through, don't you? Yeah, but I have a feeling the guy was probably trying to get outside. You mentioned it. It was the big nose tackle, right? Yeah. Darren okay. Moore. That explains it. He was smelling it out. It's third down and ten. A tough conversion now facing the Falcons. Billy Johnson gets the reverse handoff. He's got a blocker, Thielman, in front of him. Oh, oh they're going to call a flag penalty on this. Oh. Wait till you see if there's a flag thrown as Bobby Johnson rode Billy Johnson right out of bounds and had him by the hat, taking him out. It looked from here. I can't believe they didn't call that. See, that face mask right there, he's the only, he's the only Falcon that wears those duck lips, they're called. They, they, <laughs> see this double? It's like a handle. Face masks become like handles. Well, he went right to the head and got oh, they away went for with the it. Head. They went for the jaw and they got away with it, like you said. Johnson and Johnson, it's a good thing they make tape. Fourth down and 10. Giacomora, he's run with one. He's going to kick this one, though. It is an average kick taken by Growth at the 25. Growth gets away and moves up to the 33 yard line. Wow, action heats up a little bit. Helmet to helmet. Giacomora finally putted it, huh? 36 yarder, and it's 10 7. Have you driven a Ford? And you don't know what you're missing. Have you driven a Ford lately? Have you driven a Ford? Look at the world. And you don't know what you're missing. Have you driven the best built American cars and trucks? Have you driven a Ford? Susan Anton. Fitness that feels good by day needs firmness that feels good by night. Top comfort, deep support. You get both in every Serta Perfect Sleeper. You see, only the Serta Perfect Sleeper has the total suspension system. It's a new dimension of total support and comfort to give you a great night's sleep. Perfect Sleeper by Serta. It's a healthy investment in yourself. Duckett has a sprained ankle. That's the good news. He may not return today. We would understand that, but it is not a knee, Charlie. And, of course, we'll take a sprained ankle over a knee anytime. Always, always. Those knees are career-enders. Keep in mind that the Saints' best, best scoring quarter is the third period. But young Wilson is the quarterback, not Stabler. Inside move out over the 36-yard line is Wayne Wilson. Now, Bum Phillips made a very big point of telling us that he did not want to play Wayne Wilson, especially if he thought there would be an injury possibly to number 30, right? 
I just don't want to do anything to a guy that might hurt his career or hurt the rest of the season. So I know those players are going to get out there and say, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. But he always leaves it up to the trainers and the doctors. And it's still questionable whether he's going to play today before the kickoff. And he's a big part in this game today. He picks up four yards on that. That's Wayne Wilson in motion right there, the fake. And now gives the ball back to Wilson. Look at this move. What a shift. He breaks out. Wilson gets to the 42-yard line. There's a play by an injured person that's not supposed to be in the ball game. We just talked about what a vital part he is of this team. Little screen pass out there. Oubre and 62 John Hill leading the blocking. I tell you, this guy's a, he was a free agent. And he's gained as much yards as George Rogers has for this Saint team this year. And doesn't mind blocking. Good, good ch chase by Rady, the young linebacker. Oh, that might have been a touchdown. First and 10 inside the 40 for the Saints. The blitz is fake, or is it? No, the blitz is on. The Falcons came with people and a good run by Rogers. Tackled by Britt. Rogers to the 35. He's just pulling up his socks. He doesn't look like it's an injury or anything. Atlanta trying to make something happen on first down by blitzing. Well, that's, that's been the trend in the NFL this season is that the way to negate these new passing rules is so let's blitz more, let's blitz more, let's put pressure on that quarterback. Wilson likes to throw deep. He likes to look deep and throw short if he has to. The numbers don't show that yet, but this game is just getting started, I think. Second down and six, inside handoff. Gaijan piles through there. He's a 211 pounder, born in Baton Rouge, so you know some people sitting here in this beautiful place know him. Brady making another tackle. A tough fullback, real strong legs. That's good for a football player to have strong legs. Now, but he can very sharp. He can Leg press, 1,300 pounds. Now that's a little, that's pretty strong leg. Yeah? That's very strong. Third down for three. Big play for New Orleans right here. Inside fake. Wilson with time. There's a catch by Growth. Growth is down at the 14-yard line. And a good throw by Wilson after the play-action fake. A ball of play action fake is is set up to, to try to hold the linebackers. And you see what it does to the secondary right here. You'll see both the safeties go to either side of the field. Let's see that linebacker pulling up. 26, Britt coming up. He gets sucked in on the play action pass. And that's Groth right behind him for a completion. That's what the play action pass is all about. Jeff Groth. You're getting them read that run, right? 12 men on the field. Declined. Atlanta trying to. 12 men. They were caught, obviously declined because of the fine pass from Wilson to Growth. Good little pattern that 86 ran coming across the middle. Play action. If you get that rushing game going, as Charlie Waters said, you can fake it and make people go to certain areas. It's first and 10 now. George Rogers inside the 10 to the 9. Good defensive play on that left side. Butler came up fast. Brady was there under the blockers. Even a great runner like Rogers had trouble making that one pay off. These guys, these Falcons, this is where they get big. Make yourself big, they tell you down here in this goal line. Get bigger than what you are. Second down and six. 28 left in the third. The inside drive play. Gajan. Touchdown. Hokey Gajan from LSU. Well, we said he had strong legs. Great blocking up front by the St. Lion and watch him just flat run over James Britt and Pride Moore. Keeps those legs pumping. Touchdown. How many pounds? 1,300 pound leg press. I'll take your word for it. And his too. Great run. And the crowd is up. Anderson's kick. 
It's good. Guess who's leading for the first time? Bum Phillips' team. 14 10, 71,000 plus. When you've got a big job to get done, get the small truck that's up to it. Ford Ranger V6. In a survey of owner reported problems during the first three months. Ranger here it ain't raining inside. A beautiful day down here outside, but in the Superdome, everything is right. Especially when the team leads now. 14-10. Here's Anderson. The left footer. He kicks it. It is high and it's deep. That's Riggs at the six. Riggs with a good wedge. Good field position, good strong running out to the 32. Tampa Bay on top of Minnesota, 14-9 in the third period. And which Green Bay team is showing up? 21-7 today over Cleveland. And don't forget, next week now, it all starts with the NFL today, a doubleheader here on CBS, the Packers and the Minnesota Vikings. Maybe the New Orleans Saints against San Francisco. Either one of those games, sensational. 12.30 Eastern time here on CBS. First and 10, the Falcons very quiet since the second quarter. Bartkowski waiting. Fumble by Robinson. Waddle it. Frank Waddle it came up with the ball. Another turnover picked up by the Saints. 33, Bo Robinson's the ace back. He only carried the ball twice this year, and he's only caught one pass. This is the second pass of the year he's caught. He's not used to handling the ball. The fumble's caused by Gary, Russell Gary, number 20, and picked up by Watlett. I tell you, you can feel that. You can feel momentum shifting, and if you don't tell me that crowd's not a factor. A big factor here, and Dan Henney was worried about that. He said, we know how noisy it is. But you can really feel the rival fans when you're out there and something goes wrong. With 17 rookies on the ball club, got to be something a little scary for these guys to come into this stadium. Just to walk in and see how big the building is. Wilson has gone all the way. Staver with bad ribs has been watching. The reverse play. You know who that is, Wayne Wilson. He's butting people and gets inside the 25-yard line. All effort. Wilson set up in the up-back position and a counter play coming back. You see Brad Edelman, 63, pulling to the outside. It doesn't look like his knees bothering him now. That was the problem he had for the last three weeks. Wayne really worked in the offseason, building himself up. Became a real big weight man. And instead of 208, he now weighs about 220. And that's... You see Goodlow blocking downfield. 7.53 left in the third period. It's straight football. Second down and two. The misdirection handoff to George Rogers. Rogers is short of the first down. What a defensive play. Kenny Johnson up quickly. Well, that was a great defensive play. You had the two guards out there in front of him. Rogers, and he kind of jitterbugged a little bit. 66 Oubre and Stan Brock 67 coming out and watch neither one of them do anything because that guy 37 Kenny Johnson nice underneath boy that's a great play great defensive play and that offensive line for the Saints is gigantic the little one up there is the offensive center hill at about 255 the rest of them are all 275 plus 285 at the tackle position here we go third down and a long one Inside, oh, Rogers is hit head to head. Fulton Kuykendall hit Rogers helmet to helmet, legally and hard. It's going to be close. Well, Did he you, get it? You hear those collisions, you can feel them all the way up here. That's a strong stand by the Atlanta team. Let's see where they mark it. Kuykendall filled the hole as soon as Rogers got the handoff. He met the linebacker. Well, the partisans want him to go for it. They're not even going to bring the sticks out. I can't believe it. The quarterback didn't say, come on, I don't care whether you like it or not. I want to see the sticks out here. And they decided to go for it. I don't even think they're, they didn't even. Now they're going to bring them. Question it. That's Carl Mock, great offensive center with the Oilers for 
couple of decades, I think. Great professional player. Here it is. You be the judge at home. Ooh, it's a long way short. What a defensive tackle by Kikendahl. Help my curve. Bob says, let's get it. Wilson checks in just to make sure of what they want right there. That's a good time to do it. Go get it. Wilson likes the idea, too. Now, he's got to call the play. Remember, all they said was, go get it. George Rogers is not in the lineup. Wayne Wilson is, though, along with Gajon. Gajon is some good blocker, too, isn't he? He's short and stocky. It's short yardage time. You're the cornerback. He just flew over, flew over the linebacker, plugging the hole, and here he is crawling. That's illegal. You're not supposed to crawl in the NFL. Well, you can't fly either. He did both of them in one play. Wayne Wilson flies and crawls on his way to the Hall of Fame. Great offensive effort. 20 yard line, first and 10. The Falcon had that play closed off, too. Rodgers is back in at tailback and gets the handoff. Rodgers cuts inside. Boy, good tackling by Curry. Curry in the first game against New Orleans had 20 tackles, 10 solos, and assisted on 10 more. That's oh, easy even for a linebacker. That is great, and he's a he's man on the spot there for a while when Kirkendall goes down, Kikendall goes down, and they come in, Curry has to play the middle and does it, responds great, does a great job for him. Now he's back on the outside. Kikendall scared me just talking to him personally. He just looks at you, and he's very calm and polite, but he looks like he means business. Second down and eight. Wilson back to throw. He's got time. Intercepted. Intercepted by Pridemore, still on his feet. Pride more knocked out of bounds at the 32. A big interception by the Falcons secondary. A real big interception, as we said. They, they have a tendency to make the turnovers inside the 20-yard line. They got 10 this year of their 17 interceptions. You'll see Pride more come up. He reads it perfectly. The pass is intended for guys, John. Good pressure by that defensive line and the interception by Pride more. It's 14-10 in the third period. Holy mackerel. The square edge car has... From the 32, Barkowski. Out to Jenkins. Jenkins has been pretty quiet so far today. Maybe he's going to warm it up. Let's go to New York City and an update from Brent Musburger. Brookie, you may have the toughest game going, but there's another close one. James Wilder, who carried the ball 42 times last Sunday, turned this 75-yard touchdown run to give the Buccaneers a lead over Minnesota 14-9. Let's go back to Brookie. I agree, Brent. You got to be pulling for Tampa Bay. You don't pull against anybody in pro football, but nobody likes to go through a season without any wins. Inside track play. straight ahead a good outside trap play by number 49 who came back inside Bo Robinson has bruised ribs Junior Miller has been hurt and hasn't played much and you don't want Billy White Shoes Johnson to be trapping tackles no so they put a Alamo Matthews in there a rookie number 49 also Bo Robinson fumbled the last time he had the ball and you wonder whether the coach is keeping him out because of that well maybe he fumbled because of the injured ribs you know he has a big truss there around his chest Williams now in motion, inside handoff, William Andrews takes the ball much as if to say, get the blocking done and get out of the way. He hits the hole as cleanly and as quickly as any back almost I've ever seen. He can really pick out where the hole opens up. He's only a 4-7 on the 40-yard dash, but I think he's going full speed when he hits that line of scrimmage, and he's powerful. He splatters people, that's the way they describe number 31. Bartkowski, the quarterback. Second down, and call it five. Falcons trail. Toss to Andrews. Andrews into New Orleans territory, diving right over Russell Gary. Settled down now, but Falcons trying to sort of maintain something by getting tempo, use the big offensive line, the great running back, so Bartkowski can throw the ball when he wants to. 3-12 left in the third period. 
Big conversion right here with third and two. This is the type of conversion that Atlanta likes. They can either run or pass with just about guarantee that Andrews can get two. Remember, Henning put Gibbs's Washington offense in, and they went from 0-5 in 81 to the Super Bowl a year ago. This guy's a good coach. Third down and two. Barkowski throwing, connecting. That's Matthews, Alavo Matthews, filling in and doing a very good job of it. And throwing to him in a pressure situation. Wow, that's Hadn't good call, Hadn't played very huh? much this year, yeah. Throws it in a little flat out there. He was came in motion across the field. Pressure situation. Matthews comes in and sets up next to big Mike Kinn, at number 78, that big tackle from Michigan. Is he a giant? That whole bunch, they're all giants, too. They're giants. First and 10 from the 43, handoff to Andrews, nowhere to go. Straightened up there by Dennis Winston, not much of a game. Let's go to New York City and an update from Brent Musburger. Brent, you got it. Rookie Tony Dorsett finally got loose. Seven carries for minus five against the Eagles, but here he gets outside on a first and 10 and simply outruns the Eagles defenders for this touchdown. And now the Cowboys are in command 20 to 10. Let's go back to Brookie. Doesn't take Tony Dorsett long to cover 29 yards, does it? Did I see him spike the ball in the end zone? Ah, uh, very light spike. Oh, they won't find him for that. New Orleans with a lead here, 14 to 10, 133 left in the third. Inside trap play, Andrews runs outside of the block, picks up a couple of linebackers along the way, including Bob, Rob Nairn, who was obtained from Denver for this ball club. The Saints have good people, and they are deep. They used to have a different looking club every week down here. When Bum came, he started getting good people and keeping them here in town. Third down and five. Falcons looking like they're gonna be serious on this one. One minute left in the third period. The crowd calling for some defense now. Markowski stumbling, getting up and being sacked the 43-yard line. Barkowski trips and falls again, and Reggie Lewis made sure. He can't figure this. You just can't figure out why this happens. He just tripped like he stubbed his toe and fell down. He's got bad knees. He can't get very good leg lift. I'll tell you one thing. The shoes might be too good on an artificial surface these days. It's almost too much contact. Gross back to take the punt. Jock Amaro, who has run and kicked today as a punter. He kicks us, it's a good hang time. Growth is lets it go to go. He's gonna try to, it's going for the corner. Let's see if it's touchback. It's gonna come out to the 20 yard line, but it was close. Everybody breathes the collective sigh. 15 seconds left in the third, and Jock Amaro grins. 14-10. American Airlines pilots fly thousands of miles. Yeah, let's try it in daylight. Without ever leaving this room. A flight simulator at the American Airlines flight. Atlanta could down this ball at the one yard line. You see Steve Her Hayworth tries to throw it back and he throws it back onto the turf. If they could have got it at the one, they could have kept uh, the Saints backed up and kept momentum on their side. But you can do that. You can spike it back as long as you get it back into the field of play. And, right? and as long as you leave the field of play and tap it back into the field of play. I like it. And I'll tell you one thing. Young Wilson likes that 20 yards he's got to work with right now. A 14 to 10 New Orleans lead. George Rogers hit hard at the line of scrimmage. Maybe makes a couple. Smith right there, number 65. A tireless worker on defense. Uh-oh, maybe a little hurt. Big man from Florida's have to go out. There's a, there's a class player leaving the field. Wow. At the end of three, and New Orleans leads for the first time. It's 14 to 10, 15 minutes left. Cadillac Motor Car Division and your Cadillac dealer. Light beer from Miller, everything you've always wanted in a beer, and less. And by Owens Corning Fiberglass Corporation, makers of Owens Corning's pink fiberglass insulation. Tom
Don Brookshire with Charlie Waters, and I think that sign up there is pretty much the way the Saints fans feel. We love Wilson. What a player, huh? Unproven, had a rough college career, only got to play one year in college and hadn't played very much in the pros, but he's doing well today. They took his senior year of eligibility away from him, and the Saints used him as a number one draft out of the supplemental draft. King Hill told me he thinks he's going to be a great quarterback. Toss back to George Rogers. Rogers through a big hole. George Rogers open at the 40, cuts back. The 30, the 20, and ridden down at the 14-yard line by Kenny Johnson. What a run by Rogers. He went off the right side of Stan Brock, the 280-pounder out of Colorado, and he galloped off. It separates the good backs from the great backs in the NFL. Look at him cut back against the grain on 62's block, John Hill. I like this little move he does right here. When Clyde Moore is trying to come in and make the play 27. He cuts back on Clyde Moore's backside. There's no way he can make the play. To get a big back to think like that when he gets into the open is extremely unusual. And the place is on fire. It's Cajun gumbo time. This place loves it. This football team is theirs. Looked like there was an illegal procedure move as Wilson takes the ball. Gaijan took the ball, probably number 46, but the flags were down before the snap. Looked like the right tackle may have flinched a little bit. Well, the reason why they did that because they were tired trying to run down the field to <laughs> that long run. I noticed that big Clark is in there at play an offensive line, the big kid from Nebraska. He's going to be quite a player, isn't he? Illegal motion, number 67. First down. Number 67, that's Brock. Sort of the anchor of the offensive line. He might have moved a little bit. There's Rodgers. He's got 131 yards on 17 carries today. Quietly hitting for 100 and a half or 200 in his mind, right? Third, this would be the third, yes, the third game he's had over 100 yards this year. from the 19-yard line. Wilson looked like he changed the play at the line of scrimmage. Wilson with the ball. Wilson to Wilson. Maybe, maybe got back what they lost on the five-yard penalty. Sure don't lose anything by having that man in the lineup. George Rogers is great, but this guy here... Most improved player in the NFL. Just, Wasn't a very good pass catcher. Worked at it. I can't believe that he talked Bum Phillips into playing today. <laughs> Bum was worried. Just, look, I, just, I don't want to put the guy in there. I know he's going to want to play. Bum just will not do that because he wants them to be able to walk and talk with their families when they retire from football. But Wilson convinced him. Smart move. Second down and 11. The draw play. Dijon thrown for a loss back to the 20. Good defensive play. Brady from Boise State. You know anybody else in the NFL that played at Boise State? No. I don't either. I just thought you might have some. He had 14 tackles against New Orleans the last time they played. And, you know, he was cut by a USF, USFL football team and makes it on the Falcons. Maybe they don't want good hard-knocking football players. Maybe not. They're after thespians, you know. They're actors. It's third down and 15. Wilson going for the corner touchdown. Ty Rome Young ran right by the cornerback. And what a throw by Wilson. Pencil pin, 89. Ty Rome Young has a back basketball background. He's a leaper. He did this two times last week. Anytime he's isolated one-on-one, -on -one, they go to him automatic down here in the plus territory. I know the Atlanta Falcons saw it, knew about it, but why couldn't they stop him? Bobby Butler trying. He just out jumped. And a great pass by Dave Wilson. A 20 to 10 lead. Anderson. It's off the bar and no good to the right. Twenty to ten. It was pulled a little bit. 
trying for the dog leg in the fairway. And he hit the tree. It's 20 to 10. We're in the fourth. It's here, Cadillac Cimarron 84. This one's got the touch. Clean, crisp, fun to drive. With a feel for the road and that Cadillac touch. Everywhere you look, this one's got the touch. Cimarron. Time gain, perhaps, because it is 20 to 10. The first extra point missed by Anderson in two years. He was six for six last year, and he was perfect coming in. And if that isn't the way football is, it sets up what could be a real bell ringer. Here's the kickoff by that same person, Anderson. Riggs waits at the goal line. It's a good deep kick. Gerald Riggs makes a couple of people, stays on his feet to the 24-yard line. Pallura down there to make the tackle. Good special teams play today. Don't forget, Saturday, NCAA football on CBS Sports. And you got to want to watch this one. From out west, from the desert, comes Arizona, 5-3-1 and one against the U-Clans, UCLA. Dick Vermeil, our old buddy, used to coach. 12 o'clock Eastern time, and both of these teams are still trying to run for the roses and very much in it. The NCAA starts with Era and Britt back in the studio and then right to the campus. First and ten. Markowski with too much time. And Andrews simply can't hang on. No pressure on Bartkowski. It almost looked like a made him nervous. He threw the ball hard, too, in a short little route. Rifled it in there. New Orleans, and they have trouble defensively, at least they have so far this season, in the fourth period. And the best offensive quarter for the Falcons, yeah, you guessed it, quarter number four. Now let's see if the two teams play like we've been prognosticating. We may have a close one. Matthews in motion. Andrews outside. Good tackle at the 25-yard line. Ricky Jackson made a sure tackle on William Andrews. And they've done a darn good job of keeping number 31 from big, big yardage. Ricky Jackson did a great job right there of playing off the block of Alama Matthews and making the tackle for no gain. He was a stand-up lineman in college. He played on the same team with Hugh Green and had more tackles than Hugh Green. But, of course, Hugh Green is that number one draft pick. But this guy here, he's a big factor in this Saint defensive team. Likes to blitz a lot. 45 yards on 17 carries for William Andrews. Far below his rate. Markowski being rushed. Good pass at the 40-yard line. A diving reception. May have been trapped. Let's see what the call is. Waymer was there. Bailey made a heck of a catch. Some people do not agree, but that's to be expected. Well, that's when Bartkowski does his best, when he sits in the pocket and rifles it downfield. One-on-one. -on -one. Man to man coverage out there by Johnny Poe. You don't even see him. He shows up late. Pretty good reception. Some people still said ooh and ah because ours was not the best angle, but the official was looking right in at the play. And they're pretty good at that. First and ten. Falcons on somewhat of a roll, but they trail right to Fumble. The Saints have the football. No argument here. And it's Ricky Jackson. Away in this case. Unbelievable. This team is not known for these kind of things. They're fighting. Van Noden Bartkowski couldn't hold on to it. It's 20 to 10. New Orleans is rolling. For dawn to dusk on a single tank full of fuel, plus Cadillac roominess and comfort, move up to a 1984 diesel powered Cadillac. A Fleetwood Brougham with range like this, or a DeVille, an Eldorado, or Seville. The diesel-powered Cadillacs, 
Whichever model you choose. Best of all, it's a Cadillac. Even though we're... Negative perspiration. The luck of the Saints. Watch Sparkowski rubbing his leg right there. His hand must have been wet or something. Could be. It's probably more humid down there than we realize. Whatever. It's a big one. They call them takeaways. The other coach called them giveaways. First and ten from the 40 going in. Wilson back to George Rogers. Rogers being chased as the play is strung out beautifully by the defense. And then Kuykendall drops the running back at that point. Good looking defensive pursuit that time as the entire defensive team played piano all the way to the sidelines. That's the idea. That's the whole philosophy behind the new defensive strategy in Atlanta is to string out the end run. By stringing it out, it means making the back dip out, dip out, dip out to the sideline and hope pursuit will get to him to make the play and it worked perfectly that time. Smith is back in at defense, number 65. Province is back in there. Province, Murrow, and Yates. This is a big defensive series for Atlanta. Atlanta needs a big play. Second down, eight. Inside drive play. Gaja inside the 35 to the 33. Boy, he starts fast. Low center of gravity and contact. See, Smith making a tackle there. See Kuykendall coming up and filling the hole. He tackles him and he tackles, he misses him sort of because he's, he's slow. He's only 5'9", five 5'10". Five and you're looking for George Rogers a lot too, aren't you? And you can't tackle him low. Where can you tackle him? Other scores, Dallas on top of Philadelphia, 20 to 13. We saw that replay when Dorsett went 29. Tampa Bay leading Minnesota. But it's not over, it's in the fourth period. Here we're nine, uh, nine minutes away from the conclusion. The Saints have a 10-point lead and a first down by Dijon. Looked like he hesitated at the line and let the hole sort of open up and then turned it off. Yeah. Interesting that the Saints won't put it up right here. They run a little delayed trap instead of throwing the ball downfield. Uh, Falcons cannot afford to lose this game because the head-to-head -head competitions in your own division decide whether you're alive or not in January. Atlanta faces two more teams next week, and the Saints do the same. They go into the division next week again. Neither team can afford to lose it. The blitz is on. Guys on, though, runs outside of it and gets to the 25-yard line. Kuykendall in on the tackle there. Here's the remaining schedule for the Saints at San Francisco next week. The Jets, Minnesota, New England at Philadelphia, which will be cold as you know what there. And then the Rams finally on the last day of the season. Cold as what? Cold as you can get it. These calls. Here's Atlanta. It's the Rams at San Francisco in a row. Green Bay, Washington, Miami, and Buffalo. And Buffalo might be a good team not to play the last game of the season. There's Duckett leaving the field on the carryoff. That sprained ankle we told you about has kept them out of action. Inside handoff, Wilson. Wilson gets down to the 20-yard line. Pitts makes the stop there. Seven minutes plus on the clock, as you can see. It's another reason why they're keeping it on the ground instead of throwing the ball, just eat that clock up, and it appears that the offensive line of the Saints are pushing the Atlanta team backwards. The injury has forced the clock to be stopped, as obviously the officials have to stop the clock when somebody is really hurt. Edelman is down, the big offensive left guard right now. It's 20 to 10. Don't go away. This baby may really tighten up. As a relief pitcher, everybody thought I had it easy. See Pat here? He'd pitch his heart out for eight innings or so, and then and I'd come, come in, toss three or four pitches, and walk away with a win. But I had to, had train, to train just, just like the rest of us. Yeah, well, I still like to keep in shape, and I drink drinks light, light beer. beer from Miller. See, light's less light. filling, and light really, really tastes great. Well, you just let me finish. Why? You never let me finish. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Let me finish that for you, Sparky. Oh. <laughs> First class. For you, it's a way of life. In everything you do, including the car you drive. Seville, Cadillac's finest.
elegant, distinctive, superbly crafted. Seville for 1984, a car for those who choose to go first class all the way. off the field and the big rookie Clark from Nebraska number 78 has moved in there there's gumbo number four he's not sleeping this season because this team is red hot big bum better earn his food third down and three Wilson gonna be pretty close he's stacked up there by the entire unit of the Falcons the Falcons must stop this drive. They can't give up any points. They have simply got to steal a football in some fashion and make it happen. One yard short. The Falcon defense only came in with nine interceptions. They're not a big INT team yet. They play good team defense, but right now they're being tested. 621 left. And of course, nobody is stopping the clock. The Falcons want to save their timeouts for the offense. And the fellows in the black and gold. Oh, he's just on the field in time. And he may have just made it. A player did a dive into the defensive setup. Rodgers off the right side. It's going to be close. Looks like he might have gotten it. He waded through people. Kuykendall was there early. And Province. The people sitting right along the line of scrimmage on the far side of the stadium think it's good. Well, Andrew Provitz probably made the best play of the game right there when they tripped him as he came onto the field. Scrambled to his four-point position and got over there and made the tackle, but just short. He flopped in there. I thought he was doing a gainer. You know, you get the you get situations that, that sneak up on you, realize that they have a lot to do with the influence of the ball game. This that was a big situation. Had Atlanta be able to stop them right there, they still have a chance. Five minutes, 21 seconds left. High formation on first down toss to Rodgers, who piles it in there inside the 15. Johnson there and Pridemore from the secondary. You're the cornerback. That's Wayne Wilson, number 30. And you see Kenny Johnson knife in front of him. Boy, that's a good little play. You go upfield and you give him one way and then you dodge back the other. You take a chance if you can get in there and they dip outside, you're in trouble. But that was a good play by Kenny Johnson. George Rogers loads it up. He doesn't take anything off. When he cuts back, he is ready to spring on you. Second down and eight. Inside the 15-yard line. Inside handoff. Wilson hits, spins away, and still makes a yard or two. What an invaluable player he is to have sitting right in front of George Rogers. You start keying the big fella, and Wilson will eat you alive. Well, Wilson's no midget. He's 6'3", 218. Look at the difference in the rushing yards. They have held William Andrews in check, and a lot of that has been just to take the clock away from the Falcons. Get him off the field is the best way to stop Andrews. And Rodgers has been sensational. You got the clock on your picture there. Rodgers is out. Inside, guys out. Touchdown! In French, they would say, do. That's his second touchdown of the day for Gajon. Powerful running, great offensive blocking. Look at this leg action. That's five-yard line when he was first hit by Pridemore. Runs over that tackle and lunges for the touchdown. That could be a nail with 3.45 left in the ball game. An important NFC divisional clash in the West. And the Saints are rolling. And the hometown crowd loves it. 27. 27 to 10. 3.45 left. Nothing like the home, folks, when you're up by 17. For years now, we've Saying, been... We've got a good club. What the heck happened to most of the season? A big kickoff. Riggs is taking it out of the end zone, fumbling it. And the Falcons are going to be inside the five-yard line or close, and they're lucky to have possession. Well, 
Well, the fans have waited for 20 years to get it, to have a contender. They've never even had a winning season. The best they've done here is eight and eight. They should be cheering. I saw John Meekin Jr. before the game, and he says, you know what? Football is fun, Tom, this year. It is really fun. And it is. It certainly is. 27-10. A tremendous explosion here by the Saints, and they're getting hotter. And for the Atlanta Falcons, as they say in the trade, the boat is leaking. Everything goes wrong, and they begin to come over the top. It's got to be puzzling to the Atlanta team because they're a strong ball club. First and 10 call. Inside the five. Barkowski throwing out of the end zone on a sprint. Being chased and knocked out of the end zone on the second, on the two-yard line. Dirt Winston. Dirt Winston chasing the quarterback out. Let's consider that a sack, on a fifth sack of Barkowski, who is not taking them as part of the game plan. These are being forced on him. Don't forget Sports Saturday. The Remsen Stakes, the 1983 World Figure Skating Championships, and John Madden's journeys among the injured players of the NFL. Next week on Sports Saturday on CBS. Second down, Barkowski being chased out of the end zone, and it is incomplete at the fourth and a half yard line. And Barkowski came very close to going out the back part of the end zone, which would have been a safety. They had that rolling pocket. The only problem was Tony Elliott, number 99, for the Saints recognized the rolling pocket and came up field. Obviously, the Saints are just laying their ears back and going for the quarterback now. And that end zone blue that Markowski's running around on is a pretty treacherous place when everybody wants you. 3.23 left. Rolling pocket's good for a more mobile quarterback, and Mark Kelsey's not mobile. And somewhere else but the end zone. Third down and 12. Markowski straight back. Unloads. Misses Andrews in the left flat. Giacomaro will punt from the back line of the end zone. Markowski's day has not been the best he's ever had. A couple of years ago, he had four touchdown passes. 79, I believe. Not this year against the Saints. Growth is back at about the 43-yard line. And you see where Giacomora is standing. He is darn near out of this ballpark. He's over by the Hyatt Regency Hotel. <laughs> it's a good snap. An average kick, but not bad under the circumstances. Growth fumbles it. It's a muff. Let's see. Growth might have gotten his own fumble back. That would have been a muff, not a fumble. And I'm an expert on this rule. He never had control of it. He never had control he of it. He doesn't have to recover the fumble with the muff. He doesn't have to recover it. Oh, yes, he does. The other team cannot advance it. The other team can't advance, advance it. But a muff is a muff. A little pressure put on that time, but Growth did recover it. And possession right now is nine tenths of the law, obviously. 309 left, a 17 point lead. Inside drive play. Cliff Austin piling in there. A deep team that Bum Phillips has acquired from all over this hemisphere. Canada, you name it. If he found somebody down in his old town of El Paso down in there around Utah, he'd bring them in and put them in the suit. You know, another thing that he brought in, he, he brought in Greg Stenberg and uh, Vernon Perry from this Houston Oilers team, and it solidified the defensive backfield. They're veterans, experienced. And he trusts people, and they react by playing well for him. Second down. That's Austin again. Well, he's a good-looking ball carrier, too. Bobby Butler finally making the tackle. Austin can run. Cliff Austin from Clemson was a leading ground gainer in the championship team at Clemson and had a great preseason, got injured, and just came off injury reserve two weeks ago. Dan Henning over the sidelines. Remember, this is the first season 
We're hitting at the helm. You cannot get all of your programs in. In the first season, he has done some job in changing the atmosphere around the Falcons. 27-10, two minutes to daylight, eh? Hang in there. Down here, senior producer Charles H. Milton III. Produced by Eddie Gorin. We hit him with a big bill on Friday night, but Bob Daly, our, our director, always the class man in an operation. Paul Arndt, our associate producer. All the people around CBS, Johnny Connell, and Bill Dippold, and of course the people that bring these beautiful pictures and great sound, we hope, into your living rooms. And they are more of a team than almost any football team. We work very hard at it, and we hope it turns out to be fun and relaxation for you. The final score, Atlanta losing on the road to the New Orleans Saints. It was the Saints 27 in a great second half explosion. The Atlanta Falcons 10. I'll tell you one thing, the Saints are the devil. It's the Tom Brookshire for Charlie Waters. We'll be back here at the Super Bowl with a little post-game show. The exits, and we're heading for New York City for a while. Then we'll be back with a talk with a couple of the Saints right here. They were victorious 27 to 10. Let's go to New York City and Brent Musburger. All right, welcome back to New York, and thank you very much, Tom Brookshire. Let's get everybody up to date now. And Tampa Bay may finally break through and win for the first time this season. The Vikings are on the move, so certainly we'll keep an eye on that game for you. And, of course, the final here, New Orleans was a winner this afternoon over Atlanta, 27-10. to 10. Next for the Saints is a very big one against the 49ers in San Francisco. The Saints are stocking a playoff appearance. And a fake punt got Atlanta going early. Watch now. They didn't close off the right. It was obviously up to the punter. He saw the lane open. He took advantage of it. Then Dan Henning's powerful fullback, William Andrews, got in for the game's first touchdown. Ken Stabler was not playing, but Irv Dave Wilson did a superb job in relief. Did a great job and did. Wilson flipping out to Wayne Wilson. Powers in from the six yard line. And from this point on, Brent, it was all New Orleans. Here was the short back, Hokey Guy John in for his first of two touchdowns. George Rogers with this run, the setup still another score. It was for 64 yards. So with Rogers and Wilson now healthy, this is a very potent team that can control the clock as well as the ground. And of course, that allows Bum Phillips to take some pressure off of Dave Wilson, who didn't need any pressure taken off him when he hit Tyrone Young with that touchdown. And then Guy John came back. 27 to 10 so now the Falcons fall back they are four and six but anything can happen out there in that west these teams are beating each other if you're wondering when's the last time the Saints swept the Falcons in a season you've got to go back almost a decade to 1974. Now the New England Patriots over Buffalo 21 to nothing in the fourth quarter hard to figure out the bills one week Joe Ferguson will toss three or four touchdown passes other weeks he does not look that good today he was being shut out there in the fourth quarter Tony Collins has scored once and Steve Grogan has thrown two touchdown passes to Weathers in that game the Pittsburgh Steelers climbed all over the San Diego Chargers early the Steelers defense scored its seventh touchdown of the season 26 to 3 now the Steelers will go to 8 and 2 that will be the best record in the AFC they appear to have the best defense overall in the NFL Green Bay and Cleveland 28 to 14 they are in the fourth quarter Lynn Dickey now has thrown four touchdown passes in the game he continues to lead the NFL in that category the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this could be the story of the day 17 12 they are in the fourth quarter right now and the Buccaneers are trying to hold on for the first win of the season and Irv let's take a look at some of the action in that game you know well Brent that when the Minnesota Vikings are involved in the game the kicking game is crucial here Greg Coleman punts to Tampa Bay the Tampa Bay receiver Andre Tyler muffs the ball and the Vikings wind up recovering at the 12 yard line and John McKay is wondering if he's really going to get his first win Tampa Bay punter, number five, Frank Garcia, has the opposite happen to him. His kick is blocked, goes out of the end zone. The Vikings line up with a two-point safety. And Steve Dills, trying to get something going for his team, has hit from behind, fumbles the ball, and Dave Logan picks it up and rambles 54 yards for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Tampa Bay is back in the hunt, Brent. Jack Thompson handing the ball off to James Wilder, number 32, rips off his left tackle, Wilder goes 75 yards, which is the longest run from scrimmage in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers history. 
And I'll tell you, what a back wilder has turned out to be for John McKay. He carried the ball a record-breaking 42 times, and again today he has been the workhorse. Time is running out. They should be down to about the two-minute warning in that game. 17-12, the Buccaneers over the Vikings. Cincinnati against Houston. It is now 55-7. to Pete Johnson has scored three touchdowns. The Oilers will slip to 0-10, and, and they are a franchise now in complete disarray late in the fourth quarter there. The Raiders in Kansas City and the Chiefs have just come back to take the lead, 20 to 14. It has been seesaw in the fourth quarter. Marcus Allen had scored from one yard out to give the Raiders a 14-13 lead. The Chiefs then marched the length of the field in their next possession. Dallas and Philadelphia and the Cowboys, after trailing by 10 points, have come back now and they are hammering the Eagles 27 to 13. Irv? Comeback Cowboys indeed, Brent. But the Eagles thought that they got some motion from the offense right here. For example, in the first quarter, Mike Quick catching a touchdown pass from Ron Jaworski, a 20-yarder, looked like they had things going according to plan. The other thing they wanted to do was put an awful lot of pressure on Tom Landry's great running back, Tony Dorsett, force him deep, make him run parallel to the line of scrimmage, and throw him for a loss. They did very well in the first half of the ball game. But the Dallas Cowboys, we all well know, are come from behind football team. Timmy Newsom, 12-yard touchdown reception there. And from that point on, Danny White has the Cowboy machine going. Tony Dorsett, bottle up, rambles up the left sideline for a 29-yard touchdown run. And from that point on, it was just old Dallas where we've always known him, Brent. White finding, looking for help, going deep, and Tony Hill wide open, made it look easy. 27-19 Dallas. We have an update on Tampa Bay. James Wilder now has carried 28 times for 208 yards. The Vikings scoring threat was stopped. The Bucks have the ball, they are in possession of the clock, and apparently they are going to record their first victory. And Jimmy, how about the Philadelphia-Dallas game? Cowboys continue to dominate there? No, they didn't. Philadelphia just scored on a long pass and they're getting ready to try the extra point. Well, here is the long touchdown pass. And again, it is Ron Jaworski having time. And of course, the Cowboys thinking they have it in hand. They let the man get free back there and he gets on into the end zone. And Irv Jaworski still has the ability to go long in that attack. Of course, Ron has a great sense for long passes. Where he has problem, though, is if a defender gets in his face, of course, and, and flips his vision. All right. And the NFL today will continue on CBS in just a moment. They have just run it to eight and two final. They're all over the San Diego Chargers. And Jimmy, the Steelers came on and they surprised you today. Here's Cliff Stout over the middle to Walter Abercrombie. No question about it. What's so surprising about the Steelers is that their secondary is so poor, but yet nobody gets the ball off of them. The defense keeps scoring for them. And Abercrombie has added another threat back there with Franco Harris. Here is Abercrombie up the middle for a touchdown. Jimmy, that was the Steelers' first touchdown. Ed Luther appears to be having some trouble as the Charger quarterback. Fumbled the snap there, couldn't come up with it, and there's that opportunistic Steeler defense. Mel Blunt simply running on in for a touchdown, and Don Coriel is very dejected, but Jimmy, I would think it is simply injuries that have slowed up the Chargers. Oh, I think the last game against Washington Monday night really did it in for him. Okay, well, I know where you'd like to be right now, down there on Bourbon Street, where they got to be <laughs> celebrating. Tom Brookshire, he'll be out there soon, but right now he's standing by for us, so let's send you back to Brookie in the shadow of Bourbon Street. Tom? <laughs> You're right, Brent. That's exactly what I was thinking. Jimmy, you better come down tonight. We're going to get some good gumbo and have some fun down here, I think. Listen, Charlie Waters' final score, by the way, was 27 to 10. It seemed to me like that the uh, the defense, we don't really talk about New Orleans State's defense a lot, but the defense played extremely well, and we're going to talk to the fellow that made the offense go. Of course, that would be Dave Wilson. Just a minute. Didn't you think the defense played very well? Yeah, they got the, the uh, interception against Barkowski at the opportune time and cashed in on I think that was mm -hmm. when the momentum in the game changed. But Dave Wilson, what a great game he played. Well, let's Coming find out how he bench. feels about yeah, it. Great you? game. Okay, Dave, you down there? Yes, sir, I'm down oh, here. Boy, look at that. He looks like he's on the aircraft carrier Guam or something. He's got his headset on. Dave, he had nine for 14 for 146 yards. But I thought that the touchdown strike to Tyrone was really a good throw. Did you feel like that was that was one of your good hummers? I, well, I think definitely that was one of the good hummers. I think he was he was wide open on the play, got the ball in the place that it could be gotten. I, I really believe that was one of the major turning points of the game. We ended up going up. Yeah. We're showing you that now. Do you have a monitor down there where yes, you can sir. see it? Yes, sir. How does it look this way? Looks awful good. He's in. <laughs> that was a good one. And Dave, did y'all change up your game plan any when you were at the quarterback position as compared to when 
when Kenny was in there, or did they influence you much during the ball game? I think they influenced, they were calling a lot more of the plays than they usually do with Kenny out there. So that was a, a big change in what I was used to. And so we had a couple mix-ups early in the game. We didn't have some of the guys in the game and they weren't getting the plays in with very much time for me to get it off. But in the second half, we, had, in the second half, we adjusted to that. And our offensive line just did a hell of a job up front and our backs picked the holes out. And, and what else can you say? We just uh, pounded the ball on them in the second half. How did Wilson talk his way into their playing some today? Because we had heard that he was hurt and uh, that bum, and you guys didn't really think he was going to play much for you. Well, Wayne looked good during the week, and uh, like uh, Bum was telling us last night, he didn't want to take a chance on somebody's career for one game. You know, he thought if he could wait for one more week, but I guess the doctors convinced Bum that Wayne could play, and obviously he was a, a big asset for us. He made some big plays. Davey, how many games have you started? We started talking. I knew you started against the Rams back in 81 and beat them, and you beat a couple of other teams. How many NFL games have you really started now? I think this is the, the actual the fifth start on the, in a gosh. regular season game. It's amazing. Now, we have uh, number 38 queued up, uh, and any time you have a George Rogers playing for you, uh, you got to know that you can use him. But this is some play, and you might want to see it from this perspective. Yeah, we came to that play. Uh, we shifted Wayne out to the double wing, and they were coming up in a blitz. And we were we had a different play on audible at the line and there was just nobody back there and george you know being the great running back he is just took it down the chute we were saying that to get a big man out in the open to have him with that much presence of mind is highly unusual he cut back two or three times and, and made those safety men really get him cornered uh, how about uh guy john every time you call upon the guy, nobody thinks he's a starter, but I'll tell you one thing, he plays like hell for you, doesn't he? I tell you, Hokie Gajon is just he's one of the most underrated players around, and on our team, because we have Wayne and George, that, you know, you sometimes overlook Hokie, but he's one of those people that just know what's going on, he knows what to do out there, and he runs his, he runs his tail off, he runs hard, and I don't, those DBs don't like coming up and hitting that boy. David, you're single. What happens to you after a big win like this in New Orleans? Because uh, we're going to have to catch a flight, which is probably just as well. Be, but uh, what do you do? Do you go to a party with the team, or do you guys split up and just go to your favorite oh, actually, French restaurant, or what? This is opening weekend for duck hunting, and I'm just starting to get into hunting now that I've been down in Louisiana. I'm going with Hokie Gajon and Frank Wallet down about a three-hour drive. We're going to go hopefully shoot some ducks tomorrow. <laughs> Dave, what about next week? Next week, San Francisco, another crucial game for us. I don't know what they did today, but we've got to come out there with uh, with our mind on the NFC West Championship, and hopefully there's you know, some type of playoff spot. It's a, it's going to be a crucial part in our season for us. Are they a different team for you to, to prepare for? In other words, that what is their defense? Well, last time we you? played against them, I got to play some. Kenny got hurt early, and yeah. I came in, and they did a lot more blitzing than what uh, Atlanta did today. We didn't get our running game or our passing game going, and I was a little bit flustered against them. And Hopefully we'll be a little bit more settled down and just try and get into some flow. Did Kenny help you at all on the sidelines day to day? I, I noticed he sort of stayed away from things, and, and I have a feeling like that, that he wants you to become independent and run your own program and your own thing on the field, just like Bum Phillips wants you to do. No doubt about that. Kenny is that type of person, but when he came a couple times, like after I threw the interception and a, and a couple of the plays that looked like we had a little you know, flustered, frustration out on the field you know he just comes up to me and tells me to settle down and relax and just keep plugging at it because we weren't out of the game at any point you know especially just even 10 points down our defense got us the ball back and that helped a whole lot the way that they played today too boy you're very calm and you also handle the interview very well when you get through quarterback another 10 or 12 years you'll probably be up in the booth uh, you'll be very good at it well, hopefully man, i don't know those defensive backs up there they seem to handle it pretty well listen we appreciate it very much it was fun for us to to be the one when you got to start this year to be with you on it and we'll be watching you along the way and uh cbs is uh, is is darn proud of you and you really put on a good show i know the people in atlanta probably are saying oh, darn it we lost one but you did a good job and you should be very proud thank you very much Tom. Okay. okay dave we're gonna look at some stats here in just a minute and and we'll talk about it again and i i want to get back to the fact that what they held andrews to uh, uh andrews uh, according to my stats had a uh, uh, 45 yards on 17 carries. Now, he even had 77 yards in the, the game played over in Atlanta. So this was by far the best rushing defensive game probably that uh, uh, this team has played in a long time. The other thing to, to look at right there is the turnovers. Atlanta just, they were on the plus category in the give, giveaway takeaway, and they just don't like to turn the ball over. The Saints, on the other hand, were minus in the turnover situation. They come out of the game with three turnovers, and they cash in on them. You could feel the momentum change with those turnovers and influence the game. The turnovers are the big thing, right? Only one at a time of possession. That doesn't mean much unless you get points on the thing, right? Well, we're sitting here in a place that has cleared out very quickly. Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling I know where a lot of the people went, but they, they did get outside, and it was a great day for football, especially if you were a New Orleans Saints fan. I, I'm just thinking about all the years when everybody used to get excited here. 
uh, when Danny Abramowitz was, uh, you know, catching a lot of footballs, but they would lose. And, and, and I look back in their first uh, leading rusher in 1967 was, was Jimmy Taylor, the old Green Bay Packer came down here. He and Horning did to finish off careers. And he led uh, rushing with 360 yards for the whole season. And I'm thinking George Rogers gets some of that like that in a quarter. <laughs> yeah, they, they're strong right now. You know, Bum Phillips is going to own this city by the end of this year. You know, what a great guy to come in and take over a franchise and build it. You know, mm -hmm. Friday afternoon we were out at practice, and at the end of practice, you know what they did? They, they cracked the oysters open and, and, and served them oysters and at had practice? a couple of beers after practice on Friday. You yeah. know, that Cowboys and Landry has us, takes us in and makes us watch films after practice on Friday. Well, our team didn't even feed us on Sunday. <laughs> But it really is a good team to play for. And we mentioned earlier that it's sort of a community. It's almost like a town team. It's like sort of the Green Bay Packers were back up in the Northwoods in those days when Lombardi was running it. It's all of us against the rest, and this town is very much behind them. We're, go we're going to go to a commercial for just a moment, and we'll be back at the Superdome. As we said, we're about the only people left here, but we've seen a good ball game. I know. Hi, Tom Brookshire with Charlie Waters, and, and we're up here, and we were just saying, I, I just saw Mike Ken and a few of the Atlanta Falcon players, they've already showered, packed, and they'll be in the air while we're still on the air. <laughs> we were just laughing about having to sort of stretch here in Vampa. Uh, we've sent word down to John Meekham Jr. I thought that after a big win, when the team is very much a, a solid contender now, that, that uh, Mr. Meekham might have some uh, look backs and a little objectivity as to what it's been since 1967 here in this city to finally get a team that's really in it, and I think... I think their depth uh, is going to have a, I think it's going to be a big factor in the last four games of the year. Remember when Bum was talking the other day to us, he says, when you get to the, like that 12th game or so, and then you have a stretch run, you can really decide the whole darn thing in the last four games of the season. I was, which didn't even used to be on the schedule when I played some. Yeah, he, right? they said, you know, first of the year when we did the first game, he said, at the end of six games, we'd like to be four and two. And then the next thing, the next six games, we'd like to go four and two through that. So they'd like to be. What is that, eight and four at eight that and time? Eight and four, very good. And, <laughs> not a math major. That's okay. And uh, now they've, they've lost those two games during that stretch, so they've got to keep winning. And he said, hey, we want to be on a positive mode for the last stretch of the year. He knows what it, what it takes to take a team into a, a playoff position, and that's the streak at the end, where Atlanta, on the other hand, they, they had a big streak in 1980, and it took them to the playoffs, but, and that's what they were looking for after they'd won those two games. But not today. Too well, big a rivalry. I'm looking at the last four games since that we're, we're on that subject right now. And I notice they have uh, the, the Vikings, they've got New England, they've got Philadelphia, and that's away. That's, a, that's not a good place to go when it's cold or anything. But they finish up against the Rams here. Mm -hmm. And the way, the way we are sort of looking at things, we feel like the Rams, 49ers, and certainly now the, the Saints, and maybe even the Falcons still, this division could be up for grabs and not decided until the last day. Bone Phillips says, how in the world did I come from the AFC Central Division and go into this, into the Western Division, the NFC might be the toughest conference, or mm -hmm. the toughest division in the conference. Uh, the thing that's good about the, the atmosphere here in New Orleans is like a college atmosphere, as you could tell. The fans are very much <laughs> into the is. game, and boy, yes. they are verbal, and they play a role, and they intimidate teams. All right, let's go down. I've got a Colorado Buffalo down the sidelines. I've never had a chance to interview uh, Stan Brock before, but the number one draft choice, uh, uh, he and his brother are just two small kids that are playing pro football. Uh, Stan, how you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Uh, this is Tom Brookshire along with Charlie Waters, and uh, uh, I've watched you play, but I've never seen a, an offensive line mature like the one you've got now. You've even got those young kids uh, uh, that have come in this year looking like they've played in pro ball for like four or five years you really are a solid offensive line huh thank you I think the fact that uh, Bum Phillips uh, has stressed that so much in the in the coaching staff that we have with Carl Monk who just got done uh, with the Houston Oilers helps us a great deal in the fact that he keeps us and I heard you talking earlier younger and and like a college atmosphere at the same time we have uh, older players like John Hill and Leon Gray and Dave Lafari to, to help us younger guys out and I consider myself a younger guy with only four years Stan, what about uh, blocking for, for, for George Rogers? Do, is it different than blocking for Wilson? Do you, is there a different thing that you have to look for, or do you just take the guys wherever the defensive player wants to go? No, I think the biggest difference is that George loves to cut the ball back so much, and that's something that we tried to work on with him this week. Uh, last week he was cutting it back so much that Buffalo was, was almost just waiting for him, and this week we worked real hard on um, making him stay with the, with the hole that was called. And in the second half... Uh, they were pursuing so much to the ball 
it allowed George to cut back, and that's where he got his big gainer. What was it like in the huddle with Dave, Dave Wilson in there? Was it a lot different for y'all? No, not really. It's, it's the same. Um, of course, with, with Kenny in there, we have so much, he has so much confidence that, that, that he gives it off to everyone else. And it, it is a little bit different, but at the same time, Charlie, you know that you just have to, to play football. It doesn't really matter who's in there. Stan, closing comment. Uh, we talked to Dave Wilson. He's going to go hunting tomorrow. Like, he's like sports of field. What are you going to do tonight? What is your celebration? I'm going hunting. Uh, <laughs> we, we're going to take off and uh, do a little duck hunting. My uh, older brother's down here from Oregon. And I'm going to show him a little bit of, of Louisiana hunting. Hey, it's good to talk to you, my friend. Keep it up, will you? We'll see you down the road. Okay, thank you very New much. New Orleans Saints heading for the playoffs after a big victory over the Atlanta Falcons here today. It's 27 to 10. Some kind of a football game we saw, and the home team won it. Welcome those of you who watched the Dallas Cowboys beat the Philadelphia Eagles and welcome back those of you who saw the New Orleans Saints beat the Atlanta Falcons. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have won in a three-way tie by the time the sun sets in the NFC West. Jack Amaro back to punt here for the Falcons. They don't close down the left side of the defense. Jack Amaro with a 12-yard run for a first down and Dan Henning had Atlanta on the move. William Andrews then pounded across for the Falcons first touchdown. Dave Wilson was the Saints quarterback because of the injury suffered a couple of weeks ago by Kenny Stabler. He's got Wayne Wilson off the injured list. Wilson battled his way in from six yards out. And then Wilson came back with Hokey Guy John. They are again were looking for Wilson and he got across and the Saints had their first lead in the game. This could have been the key play. George Rogers turning upfield found daylight. He rumbled 64 yards and that set up still another Saint touchdown. Young Dave Wilson out of Illinois pitched this one in to Tyrone Young. And the Saints could be on their way. Next week, a big one, they will be taking on the San Francisco 49ers. New England and Buffalo. And the Patriots hammering the Bills, who finally scored a touchdown in the fourth quarter. It is 21 to 7 there. Pittsburgh over San Diego, 26 to 3. And yes, the Steelers.